to start out, I just want to say that this probably is the normal, like, you know, backwater American of me, but you have an awesome name. Like, like it's not just what your name is. It's like how, like, the, the syllables, like, Grants Firthner. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that is such a cool name. It's actually not a TH. It's not a TH oh, never... because most Americans think it's a TH. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, but it's not a TH. No, it's yeah. a Grants. It's a it's a T. It's a hard T. It's a okay. Grants. It's Grants still cool. Yeah. Yeah. Grants Footner. Yeah. Grants Footner. Yeah, Grants Footner. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. That's it's it. still cool. Like... <laughs> I remember the first time I saw it, and I was like, I was just like, this, this is just like it's a yeah. I think I it's, asked. It's uh, a very, it's a very even for even for 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 Austrians or Germans, it's something that they like to mispronounce and stuff. It's a, and I'm the only person on the planet with that name, so it's, <laughs> it's like that is kind of cool because if yeah. you if you Google me, you find me. <laughs> but it's also it's not your everyday German or Austrian name, so it's not your. I don't know, like Maya, Bauer, whatever, like, like or, <laughs> right. or, or, or whatever it is. <laughs> you're, you're not John Garrison, like you would be in no, America, no, right? No. <laughs> but that's a good place to start, too, because, like, uh, when we first met, we met through making a movie with our friends, yeah. and I learned that you made other stuff, and I actually did, I put you into YouTube, your name, and I found on my own, I found but, all the other stuff that you had, you like, you did all these TED Talks, I watched all of them. They're great. Nice. Yeah, and so I actually did. Like, you were easy to find because your name is so unique. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I really was. I really, really was into your TED talks. I thought you said some really interesting things that I've never heard before. Cool. Um, that will, then, then we have something to talk about. Yeah, I guess. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you kind of cover it. I think you also cover it in. I've seen two of your movies. I've seen Tracer Out and the new one. And, I watched and Glossary. Yeah. Oh, right. that, that, and and, and that, Masking that, that. Thres Threshold. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll let, we're going to plug all that, I promise. Okay, cool. But uh, in, in to start off, I want to talk about something you said. I think you were dressed you were dressed in like a uniform in the one talk. You had like it was like a soldier's uniform or something. You're sitting on a big weird chair and you're talking to a giant crowd of people. Oh, it, yes. You're yes. talking about subcultures. And at first exactly. and I and I sat down to watch that and I I like assumed you were going to say something and you absolutely didn't say it. Like you were actually talking about how you feel that subcultures that are meant to subvert society have actually gotten too comfortable in their own culture themselves to actually make a change anymore. Pretty much, yes. Right. That, that, I'm, I, I'm trying not to state it all, but I've never heard somebody argue this before because you, you know what I mean? Like, I've never heard anyone make the argument that, hey, all of you that were meant to actually change the world. You just went off into your own rooms and created your own little worlds, and you didn't actually make the world better anymore. Pretty much, yes. It was a talk I gave in 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 Montreal, in yeah, yeah, right, yeah. at the at, at the at the Canadian Center of Architecture, which was weird. And they they invited me uh, because they had this series about things that we would like to just like remove from culture or something like that, something that we would like to undo or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, they had one scholar there who was saying like, he would like to undo the internet. He thinks that the internet did more harm, harm. Than, than good. So he wanted to like, and he was arguing like to remove the internet. And I was arguing to remove subculture. <laughs> so that was my, my approach. And I had, yeah, I had the Soviet uniform sitting there <laughs> in this like strange chair that looked like a giant vagina. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying like it was kind of, it was genius uh, because your talk is on subverting subculture, and then like I'm sure the people that showed up weren't expecting you to kind of like lay down kind of an, an, a a sort of attack on subculture a little bit because you were yeah. like you're like you're you're all getting lazy and you're getting too comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you actually you're getting lazy, and, and yeah. in a certain way, it's also uh, it's also that what what subculture was in the like 1950s or 1960s or 1970s and there were certain mechanisms that that worked back then mm -hmm. uh, and people still apply them nowadays but they don't work anymore because uh, society has changed and uh, so that was i think my my basic argument was that for example i i like to use that as a as a as an example I'm a recording, actually, by the way. Yes, we are. Oh, this is the show. Yeah. I d oh, cool. I Absolutely. I don't do an intro. I just like to naturally talk. <laughs> okay, it's good. It's all good. the other info so, will be in the description and all that stuff. No, no. Oh, fine. Oh, yeah, fine. Yeah. So, like, like one example, because I'm, I'm from Austria, and... 
there is one thing that that kind of like the, the, the Austrian art scene is kind of proud about. It's the so-called Viennese actionists. And the Viennese actionists, they were uh, some pretty interesting artists. They did work in the 1950s and, of course, in the 1960s, of course, with the, all the student revolution in 1968 and all that stuff. So they did stuff, for example, to oc occupy like one, one of the biggest uh, auditoriums at the Vienna University. And they staged like some really crazy performance there. And one guy was pretty much like shitting uh, like into the college auditorium and stuff like that. And it generated a huge outcry because Austria back then in the 1960s was a very, very, I mean, Austria is still a very conservative country and very Roman Catholic. Uh, and I like to call myself a, uh, a Catholic atheist because I'm definitely an atheist, but we, I cannot deny this, that I grew up as a Catholic. You know, I, I want to say <laughs> we have this in common. I'm yeah. I'm I, I grew up heavily Italian Catholic and Roman Catholic, and I am no longer. That, a that's even Catholic. worse than Austrian Catholic. <laughs> yeah, Catholic, right. So, so it's much, yeah, we have that in common okay. at least to some degree. Yeah. So 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 Austria was was a very very uh, even more than today. Catholic and conservative society. And it was just like, you know, like 15, 20 years after the war. So mm -hmm. like the whole denazification thing wasn't really going super well. And if you compare Austria to Germany, the Germans were pretty straightforward in, in like trying to get rid of, of all the Nazis in bureaucracies and all that stuff. They also failed in doing that. But compared to Austria, Austria always had this like very bizarre uh, kind of like general way to deal with with the Third Reich and uh, with the Nazis. Just like like there was no Austria between 1938 and uh, 1945. So like we don't have to deal with that. So uh, <laughs> Austrians like don't like to talk about that. So, so, so like they, and, since as, they didn't as, exist, they act like it wasn't our thing. Exactly. So it wasn't our exactly. Problem. So so away. and and. As an artist and, and and performance artist, and also as part of my my art collective monochrome, we did a couple of performances about that. So mm -hmm. we did this this piece called the Streichel Nazi, which is the Nazi petting zoo. <laughs> so where we had like a friend of us in a Nazi uniform, like sitting on the street in a little you know like in a little petting zoo, <laughs> and and people could go by and pet the Nazi and feed the Nazi and change the hay for the Nazi in its right. little petting zoo. And we want to just kind of like address the problem that that Austrians kind of fail or have a problem with embracing their own history. So we said like, here, here's the Nazi here, here in the coming, petting zoo. Like you're coddling the Nazis yeah. still, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Like in the, on the one hand, we're coddling them. And on the other hand, we're kind of like calling them not enough in a way of like, we have to deal with them. We have <laughs> right, to right. like deal with the Nazi in our own history and stuff. So we, we did a performance about that, but, but that's, I think that's kind of like something you do if you grow up in a, in a very Catholic or in a very, in a classic post Nazi society as an artist, you kind of deal with that because mm -hmm. that's how you grow up. And that's how I guess you, you filter, uh, you're like, like a muscle, I guess you, 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 you filter, all, all the all the shit that's given to you, and then you make art out of it. I guess I gotta uh, imagine and, that's like being in America and filtering out slavery, kind of exactly. Right? It's the same. same absolutely. Deal. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And so in the 1950s and 1960s, of course, the Viennese actionists, and they were people like like uh, like Nietzsche or or or, or Günther Bruce and stuff. So they did pretty heavy performances. They were they did stuff like painting with blood or they you know like they shed into a college auditorium and stuff like that. And society of course was reacting to that because uh society was conservative uh, the news media, the big tabloids and the big magazines, they were all very conservative and they reacted to that. So they attacked it. So of course the society kind of hated what those artists were doing right. because they were attacking society and society was kind of like attacking back in a way of like uh, trying to put them to jail or something like that. One of those guys actually really had to flee to Germany uh, because it, it was part of this college shitting performance and, and, they wanted to put, yeah, and they wanted to put him in jail. And so he fled to Germany uh, uh, so he didn't have to go to 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 go to an Austrian right, jail right. and stuff like that. And so were they the and they're that. attacking like they're not. I'm assuming back then they were attacking not even the message as much as the fact that you shit publicly and that is not exactly. allowed in our Absolutely. society. 
but you had Absolutely. to do something that shocking to get any type of message. Yeah, there, there are certain things you just don't do and you know exactly what those things are right, because right. society is very hierarchical. It's very strict. You just know what you are not allowed to do. And the very moment you do those things, you kind of like break through that invisible barrier. Right, right. And that's how you attack, at least in the 50s and 60s and 70s, it worked pretty well. How you attack society as an artist, you provoke. That's the thing you do. Uh, and uh, and I mean, the, the, the thing is also true uh, for, for horror films. Uh, right. Like, you know, like the whole thing about the exorcist, for example, in the 1970s, when people said like they fainted in the, in, in the <laughs> cinema and stuff like that. Right. It's I mean, of course, all that stuff Which is, is part of the PR, you know, like they, they were they were making all of that most of that stuff up because it was good. There is a film. It's so groundbreaking and so horrible that you will faint in the theater. Ah, right, right, yeah, right. OK, but that's that's the way how you kind of like. But it's all, it also is a comfortable way for people to go to be challenged by something without mm -hmm. actually challenging their life. You know, yeah. hey, come and be challenged for two hours. This will freak you out, make you faint. But yeah. it won't actually ask you to change. <laughs> yeah. And in the same way, like people yeah. are sitting at home in their comfy little uh, like uh, uh, lazy boys or whatever the Austrian <laughs> equivalent is and sitting there and reading about, oh, my God, those Viennese actionists, what they did in this uh, college auditorium. That's horrifying. They should all go to jail, blah, blah, blah. Like that, that kind of stuff, you know. But in a certain way, it worked because the like artists were provoking society. Society was reacting to it uh, because people were talking about it. The, the news media were talking about it. There were, of course, like less pundits than today, but they were still pundits and they were debating all that stuff. And in a certain way, that shifted the so-called overton window in one direction. So right, like right. by provoking and by, by, by attacking... Uh, the very conservative society, uh, you kind of changed it. And uh, there is this um, French philosopher called Foucault, and and he kind of like uh, like formulated something like a like a theory about how that works. And he calls it that back then, like the Austrian society, but also the the U.S. society, uh, uh, were classic examples of the so-called. A disciplinary society and a disciplinary society is a society I, I mentioned it before is you kind of know what you're not allowed to do and if you do that there will be a form of discipline so you will be punished you will be punished if you do not obey the stop sign if you see a stop sign on the street and and you walk over or you, you drive your car through the stop sign and the police officer sees you you disobeyed the rules, and that's, therefore you're being punished. You have to that, pay a fine or something like that. That goes for like so, social tax too. Like if you shit on a church, people will disown you personally. Like there's yeah. there's there, there's consequences no matter where you. Turn. Absolutely, right. there, yeah. there, there, there are rules. There are, there are social rules. There are norms. Yeah, and if you disobey those norms, if you if you don't do that, or the, if you don't adhere to that stuff, then then you will you will have to. To deal with the consequences, and the right, consequences right. could be that you're being sent to jail or or whatever it is. But that works especially good in a disciplinary society because a disciplinary society is where all that stuff is known. You know the hierarchy. For example, the the worker knows that he has to obey the boss of a company, and uh, like uh, like a citizen knows he or she has to obey. A police officer or if you're in a school you have to obey uh, the teacher as a pupil and all that stuff so there are clear hierarchical structures in society and everyone knows how that works it's quite open and that's why that structure works it is quite blatant blatantly seeable and feelable how society and, works and that's what makes that's that form of rebellion to... possible right like yeah the, the shock exactly. of it right like you can there's something to break through i'm, I'm assuming, absolutely right? that yeah. that's the whole thing that i, I like to talk about uh, it is easy in a society uh, in a disciplinary society to subvert that stuff because you know how it works mm -hmm. you know that you're not allowed to i don't know like uh play tricks on your teacher, but that's why it's so fun to play tricks on your teacher because you kind of find the, the subtle ways of like tricking your teacher without being expelled from school or stuff <laughs> like that. So you, you kind of find like, like the, uh, 
the, the nudges and the edges and the things that you can do to 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 challenge. It's, it's kind of like uh, medicine. Find out what'll kill me and bring it back just enough so it doesn't. I like want exactly. as much as possible. You know? And sometimes, as for example, the artists of the Viennese actionists did. They were specifically kind of like, of course, overdoing it. They were right, doing right. things that were so extreme in that setting right. uh, that that uh, that like the reaction, of course, was was very very strong. And uh, but in the meantime, like like society has changed. Of course, I'm I'm not talking about I don't know like North Korea or Iran or something like <laughs> right, that. Right, right. I assume like North yeah. Korea and Iran are classic examples of a disciplinary society where that still works even in 2021. Because in like no in 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 They'll Iran be like, uh, they'll be yeah. killed. Yeah. They won't just yeah. be jailed. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're openly gay in Iran, you risk being killed. That's right. it. Right. You know, like so, and and anything that is related to you know like gay subcultures and stuff right. like that, I mean that is a very hard way of like challenging a system. Of course, if you risk your own life, right, right, doing it, and uh, of course, but but in a Western liberal or liberalish freeish society like the US or like Austria uh like things have changed and and there is a there's a new term for that and uh, another french guy who killed himself by the way like deleuze and he he called that uh the society of control and he didn't call it a society of control because the, it is because society is so strict that everyone is being controlled no society of control means that everyone is controlling him or herself. So the stop sign is not outside there. You see the stop sign and, and then you have the possibility to decide if you want to obey the stop sign or disobey the stop sign. Right, right. The stop sign is already in your head and you think it's best for you to obey the stop sign because you think it's best for you in your own interest. Uh, uh, like a classic example for that kind of stuff would be uh, that uh, nowadays it's quite common that the person that you work for, like I, I talked about the workers and the bosses right, and the right, workers, right. the workers in a disciplinary society had at least the possibility to form a union to fight right. against the boss. You know, like we can work together and have a form of solidarity and together we are stronger against the bosses. That's and all that's, they have. Almost. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's the only yeah. form they have. And that's that's why in a disciplinary society we ended up like fighting for like eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, and 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 eight hours of of, of, of play and of, porn of play and or fun. something like yeah, that. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, the bosses wouldn't have given us that stuff just because they are nice. No, we, we like you like, have to fight for, fight for that. Yeah. Yeah. You have to fight for that. Yeah. But because it was it was possible to fight for that because uh, it was clear how you can break that system. You can have a strike or something like that, whatever it is. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But the problem is, for example, if you think your boss is your friend and you're working for your friend and you do your friend a favor, like, like if your boss comes to you and says like, ah, I, it, it, it would be so great. You know, like I have this really great date with, with this really great chick on the weekend so I can't do like the paperwork. Could you do the paperwork on the weekend for me? It would be so great. And you would do me a real big favor. And you say like, of course I'll do that for you because you're my friend and, you know, and like, <laughs> right, and, right. and great chick and, you know, <laughs> uh, and that's how the society of control works because suddenly you feel it's in your best interest of being exploited or you don't feel being, you, you don't feel exploited anymore. You feel it, you're part of this big family of the computer game company that you work, you're working for, or you, you're in this big and you have, uh, I mean, there are all these so, like, so it's crazy, like a, a uh, of the fault in a, we're all in this together feeling. Yeah. Like it's actually has faults to it, even though it sounds yeah, yeah. better and more free. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and 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 but there are other other examples for that. For example, that uh, I, I see quite frequently because I'm I'm in Florida now, like for the last week. Because you're in uh, you're I'm, in America's America. Like, like I America, am, I am, like I'm, Florida is the America of the of America as America is the America of the world. <laughs> I, I was very astounded that really a bunch of people are wearing masks here. I was That's not good. expecting that. It's it's good. Like I went to the Walmart and at least a third of the people had masks on their faces, which is I was what. 
Okay, Florida, so that is point. not the picture that is painted for us. I'm I if you didn't know, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, so I'm up I the know. coast. Uh yeah, that is not the picture that we all have in our heads up here of what is happening in Florida. We we imagine everyone is in the streets fucking and spitting on each other right now, you know, and that, and DeSantis is cheering. But well, yeah. No, I I've not witnessed any of that before. Okay. But I got <laughs> I, I went to the Walmart. <laughs> got to the I got center. my I got my my Arnold Palmer diet half and half, and I'm jugging it right out of the of the bottle. This is so off topic, but the other day, somebody somebody actually messaged me and says, "Have you ever seen a regular flavor Arnold Palmer can? If there's only diet and there's light." And I I'm, have seen. I have seen. I was going to say regular flavor does exist, right? It I, does, it does exist. exist. It is not. It is not a myth. It is, <laughs> it is, it not is a out myth. there. It is there. <laughs> right. It is out there. And you know, like capitalism is good at doing stuff like that. You know, like you, oh, have, yeah, to, definitely. you have to have like eight different varieties of Arnold Palmer. <laughs> and uh, we, have, so we, have, we have so much variety here. You can't complain about that. But. There's, Absolutely. there's other downsides to it. So, like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm completely detoured. I'm but, sorry. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I saw it at the Walmart, and I saw it at a couple of other locations here in, in, in Florida. Those signs, you know, smile, you're on camera. You know that stuff? Yeah, yeah. 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 And smile, you're on camera is a classic form of the society of control. Uh, usually in a disciplinary society, you would only show like this this uh, property is uh, monitored uh, by video surveillance or something like that. That would be the statement in a society. Uh, like, like, a, in a, like society. a robot is speaking to you. Yeah, it's very yeah. It, 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 No, it's saying like there is a camera. <clears throat> yeah. Don't do bad things. You know, you are being taped, you know, don't. But in a society of control, it does it with a smile. It's just like, hey, <laughs> Smile, you're on camera. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? And it's for your own safety because, you know, like, it's fun being filmed and it's fun being safe, you know? <laughs> you're a movie star and, too now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, yeah. so they take this, like, it's, it's a weird, nasty way of, like, getting in your head and, and telling you that all of that stuff that's happening uh, is pretty much the same. So, so like you the, still have a boss. You're so, still have a boss. You're still being surveilled. Uh, you still have a shitty job, but all feels better because suddenly your, your boss is your friend. Although your, your boss will kick you out any old day if he needs to kick you out. There is no difference. The, the, the power the structure system, stays there, yeah. but it's like an informal exactly. friendship. The power structure is the yeah. same. It's the, Maybe the hierarchies are a little bit flatter, but still the mechanism is exactly the same. It just feels different. And uh, and there, there are so many like weird ass uh, examples for that. For example, like there's a lot of of tools like that we could call, you know, like gamification and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that is playing right into that. There's a good example in, uh, I'm not sure if something like that uh, exists in, in the U S but in Austria, there is one of the big supermarket chains. It's, it's called Billa. B, B Billa. is like Billa, B I L L A Billa. Okay. Billa. It's part of a big conglomerate from Germany and B that the B I is, is cheap and L A is the, uh, is laden shop so it's, it's pretty much like the abbreviation of cheap shop villa <laughs> <laughs> anyhow okay. so it's admitting that it's yeah it, it's, it's, it's exactly we, we have uh, are, we have the dollar tree the dollar tree so i, I know the dollar tree i have been to the dollar tree yesterday <laughs> you can you can grocery shop at the dollar tree now and let me well, i got need it. this at the dollar tree <laughs> yesterday that's a wonderful i got it i'm pretty sure like 12 people somewhere <laughs> in eastern asia had to die <laughs> <laughs> for that for that to be but made it's like a dollar for me now so it's oh my god I, it's it almost i almost thought it was like a hemorrhoid seat well, oh, no, no, i, I no, didn't no. know what it was before it would it, it would be <laughs> an I didn't, I didn't, you, the uh, size hemorrhoid seat or something i don't know <laughs> until you picked it up i didn't notice the size it, it looks small oh, no, <laughs> there's you can you like like <laughs> and all there's like all, all all the good things about like cheap shit you know you can buy anyhow <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so wh wh where was I? I I forgot what I was uh, talking about. about the Dollar Tree and Billa and how the fact that they are oh, the Billa yes they're the Billa yeah, they're yeah. cheap and they're and cheap products so there's this gam gamification aspect yeah. yeah and the Billa has this like uh, thing where if you find a product in the supermarket that is overdue date for example milk or something like that or uh, like some cereal or something like that and it's overdue date and if you find that 
and you bring it to to the cashier, you get uh, you get like a fresh milk for free and additionally another pack of milk. So you go home with two packs of milk or two packs of whatever uh, you found that was over due date. Mm-hmm. And of course, many people like that, especially retired people. They walk around. It's almost like a game for them. It's a game of finding: is there something here that that is overdue date, so I can get two packs? And you know, and uh, because Billa started doing that, they were able to eradicate at least one or two people working in each uh, shop because uh, they 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 save on logistics. They don't need to pay someone to look what milk packages are overdue date. <laughs> You, they have the customers doing that for them. That's incredible. That's so that almost functions in a way like the self checkout, right? Like they figured a way out to remove exactly. workers by letting people do it themselves. Except in this case, it's to check the expired milk. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. Like that. That's incredible. But, but that's that's the society of control right there. Right, right. Uh, you're working for a company. You're not really being paid for it, and you don't even know it. <laughs> The same thing is like with Facebook. I mean, right. I'm an, an I'm an, a non-paid employee of Facebook. Same. Because I I generate value for them. They are not paying me for it. Sometimes I pay them because I want to promote something. But the same, yeah, it's pretty much like like all the stuff, all the the so-called gig economy with Uber and all that stuff is is very much tuned into this like new form of power structure that we co- could call the, the, the society of control or that Deleuze calls this, the society of control. I, if I'm stepping ahead, tell me, but it, are you getting, are you starting to get at where like the consu- in a society of control, the consumer starts to become the actual product type of thing? Oh yeah, absolutely. Is that what absolutely. you're, okay. Yeah, yeah, a- a- absolutely. And, uh, uh, and most of people don't, another example, uh, because, because I, I, I'm pretty sure you have a couple of, nerds and geeks in your like myself i mean your, i've got your, a, i've your, got your bubble i've got action figures yeah. and robocop no. and, you know i got, the, I, got the, I mean the t1000 right here i mean you know uh. yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that anyways i mean i did i did a whole documentary about nerd culture oh, i loved so it, it. I loved yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. yeah and so for example there is uh uh you, you probably know it's uh it's one of these like uh uh immersive like massive multiplayer games not not, not immersive like not, not not the classic shooting games but it's uh like warcraft it's called ingress ingress oh, oh yeah i'm very i'm familiar with it i haven't played it yeah, but yeah. i'm familiar yeah yeah and ingress i mean i think it like I, I think the time of ingress is kind of like slowly going down but i mean it had its days with millions and millions of people work uh, uh playing it and that's just, that's the same thing. I mean, Ingress is is a game that was uh, published by by Google, mm-hmm. and Google published Ingress because uh, just, just a little bit about the game mechanics, so people know who have not heard it about is, it. The yeah. game mechanics is it's a few years you, past its prime, so yeah. yeah, 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 pretty much. So you have it on your on your smartphone, mm-hmm. and uh, you can. I'm not even sure if you can choose if you join the blue or the green side. But I think you can choose if you want to blue, be blue or green. So you're either part of the blues or you're part of the greens. And you walk around in the city and you see things like the library or the statue of whatever or uh, or, or the, the Dairy Queen around the corner or the Olive Garden or whatever it is. And you can actually tag the Olive Garden or the Dairy Queen or the Statue of Liberty or whatever it is. And you can claim it for the green or for the blue side. And if the Statue of Liberty, for example, is uh, already blue and you are playing for the green side, you can assemble a couple of green people and attack the blue Statue of Liberty and turn it green. So it's, it's right, about right. claiming uh, a space or land or, or property for the green or the blue side. And uh, why did Google do that? Not as a free gimmick. Wait, as you lay it out on paper, it sounds like such a bad idea as far as like, let's make people tribal and choose sides and and claim things, like claim areas. And why did Google do that? Yeah. They needed millions of free laborers to enter geodata for them. Right, right. They want to know every single fucking fire hydrant in 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 a town. And how do they get that? By eager players, gamers, 
who run around and tag every little shit thing for ingress. <laughs> and then Google has uh, all the data. And of course, they will use it for all the other services. So we're all so, acting like little cells, cheating all the, like, you know, figuring out information and bringing it back to the host, you know? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it's like, it's, uh, the players of Ingress are working for Google as data miners, as, as geodata acquirers, and they don't even know that. They just and think, the, oh, it's a only, fun game. I like to play it. Is the enjoyment. That's the, the that's, only that's payment is the enjoyment. Yeah, the exactly. Salary, right. You feel good playing the game, uh, and you don't even consider that you might be exploited. That's right. that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, right. yeah. And and yeah, like and I, for example, that, that that's one of the one of the examples that uh, because. Uh, my, my previous two two films, like the one I mentioned before, like a, a Trace Route, Trace Route is yeah. kind of like a, a road trip movie uh, uh, into nerd culture, or let's call it the, the positive or interesting, uh, subversive, positively subversive elements of nerd culture. Right. And my that, that, that's that's from 2016, and from 2018, I did this film that is more like a. Kind of like it's 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 also a kind of not road trip, but it's like a, it's 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 a it's a journey into different concepts or different mm. terms from politics. For example, subversion or what does capitalism actually really mean? What is resistance? Right, right. What and, and all that stuff. So I'm trying to to explain in in little like ten minute segments in different styles. Uh, you, you're no, you're one of the things that I love about your work is like your take on subversion. And how how you approach it, because like I feel like that's something that I try to do. I don't know if I'm ever successful at it, but uh, that interests me the most. It's like because you're all, you're almost like subverting subversion half the time. Like yeah, in the work that I've seen, I you know in Monochrome's work, it seems like I'm, you're I'm, actually I'm, yeah. you're you're not just I'm taking a left to. turn, sometimes but you're taking another one. Sometimes I fail, yes, but <laughs> but it's it's. I mean, I think the very moment you're and I think so so many people are very especially like in the activist yeah, field. Yeah. And of course, the field of activism and you know wokeness and all that stuff that's also changing to to, to a degree. And I'm I'm not a hundred percent happy with, with some of that stuff because I think that I think most of politics nowadays in the in the leftist sphere is is kind of like fragmented. It's almost like there is like it's not a unified it, voice it, or push it, or anything. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. because most I th that's I mean I'm I'm not I'm not like I I. I don't I don't dislike identity politics, but I, I I I try to to remind people that if you base your whole entire political outview on very subjective forms of identity, then you kind of forget that you come into fistfights. Then suddenly you have that fraction of the LGBTQIA plus spectrum fighting against that fraction. And suddenly there's stuff happening like the turf wars and all that stuff of people who to a certain degree are on the same side, but because they are in their bubbles and social media, of course, helps with that. Uh, suddenly they, they are the biggest enemies. There are people who hate, there are people who hate one specific aspect of leftist culture so much, even more than they, they hate yeah. the Nazis. You know, like right, it's right. just like it, it doesn't make it, it. It's something that I think is brought up a lot. Like how I trying not to speak just specifically about American politics, but it's hard. Uh, the right is always unified, even when they don't seem to agree. Like, yeah. like, you know, like you'll have at, 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 the, at one rally, you'll have QAnon believers, you'll have the regular MAGAs and you'll have normal Republicans, but they're all standing there cheering yeah, yeah. and they're because okay. They with, have like the, yeah, they have, they have, the, yeah. They have like a common, they, they have, have like, 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 they have one common little, like, like, how do you call it? Denominator or something like there's one little thing, one, one little crystal they can agree right. on. And that's enough for them to, well, they, they, to stay they, coherent. They, yeah. They'll do any, they're all of the mind that they'll literally do anything and burn anything down to get back to like the 1950s. Like, 
or something like that. You know what I mean? The world yeah. should be a w this way, and until it's this way again, we're all yeah. we'll take anyone that'll fight with us. Yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. the left will I, not I, I do should that. be I should be able to blow other countries up with nuclear weapons, and <laughs> I want to slap my wife in the face without right. consequences. Let's go back there. It's great. Yeah. Yay. We'll take it. And, uh, yeah, I don't care if you believe in you know PizzaGate or something. Let's go. I want. Yeah, I need yeah. my soldiers. Whereas yeah. on this side, I think, yeah, I think it's the perfect time for for my for my co-host. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <that> guy. <laughs> There oh, is. is that a seal? Is that the seal? Yes, it's the seal. <laughs> there it is. And he looks grumpy all the time. And I think I think he's he's not saying anything, but he's looking grumpy all the time. So that's that's his that's his thing. That's actually me usually at home. That's what I look like. <laughs> that's just a, that's just a plush of me. But does he have a name? Uh, I think it, it's actually it it, it uh, Robbie. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, Bob, I, there you go. <laughs> which, but it is a, it's, it's a wordplay. It's not even a wordplay. It's actually kind of normal because right. it's, it's, it's a seal kind of thing. Uh, and in, uh, in German, a seal is called a Robbe, R O B B E. So that's why it's called Rob, Robbie, Robbe, Robbie. Uh, it's, it's kind of still, it's hello. <laughs> For anyone that's, I, so like, uh, I think, is, I think also like at least four or five people in Eastern Asia died for this one. Uh, <laughs> right, but, I was gonna but, say. Yeah, I was gonna say anyone that's listening. Um, uh, Johannes just pulled out a plush seal. This is also an audio podcast too. So if you're just listening mm. to it, it's a nice plump. It's a plush suit. Yeah. I have put it because I'm I'm in, 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 in our condo here in, in, in Central Florida, and I didn't have anything to put stuff on, so I found this letter. Yeah. And it also says it's not, not a, a step, <laughs> which is also very American. Like like, it's, don't step on this because I don't want you to sue me. So don't step on it. You know. <laughs> Even though it's if to look at it, and I know that some people might not be able to see it, but to look at it, it's so flimsy. One shouldn't. You wouldn't need yeah, that sign, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's such a small thing. Yes. So, yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> but but yeah. But 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 thank you. It's like what 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 I what I always try to do in my in my political work. The interesting thing is that uh, when when I started doing creative stuff, like when I was a kid, it's it's a little bit in 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 trace route where the first like ten minutes are kind of like the like from the moment I was born until I. I defined myself as, as an artist or filmmaker or something like that so there's there's this pre-story of me growing up as a nerd in in austria in, right. the, in the late 70s and 80s and stuff like that but but it's i i always had that feeling that uh so i, I think i was always a very political person i just didn't know it and i think it is and that's why i'm so fond of of filmmaking because i think that filmmaking is a very straightforward way of of dealing with with a product but also dealing with an audience you're creating something and you're presenting it to an audience you need lots of different skills and you need to be a team player to put all of that stuff together but it's very straightforward and there is never ever a debate if it's art or not and it doesn't really matter Especially, you like the film or you don't like yeah. the film so there's it's, it's not like you know if you go to a gallery most people wouldn't my my mother would not go to a gallery not even if an, an exhibition <laughs> of myself would be in that gallery because my mother a quote i wouldn't know what to wear and there is this strange division between the art world and the real world you know yeah. and i always hated that i always hated that so so Although, of course, it's easier for me to say that I am an artist because it makes like, it's just like you can't explain what I do. <laughs> anyway. well, and that means anything that you do is forgiven, and also anything you do is great because you're an artist. Yeah, yeah. So whoever, yeah, exactly. whoever gives you a so, bad review, they don't understand. Yeah, art you know? art is a very special place for very special people, and some people just don't want to go there. Which is like the good and the bad thing about art. Art right. is this bubble of freedom within capitalism or bourgeois society where you can actually do whatever you like uh, uh, and and you have this protective force field like this death star force field around it but at the same time because it's in this protective bubble you also don't need to take it serious because ah it's just art you know Adia just doing their art thing whatever I don't don't uh, let them stay whatever. over there I don't need to understand it yeah yeah exactly it, it and I think me. I think that that cinema is one of of the big art forms nowadays because it's transcending that boundary. I mean, I honestly I think that 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 
that James Cameron, James Cameron is a wonderful auteur filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks about James Cameron because he's having so many like multi I mean, he, bro he broke the box office twice. It, it, exactly. As as global box office. Who does that? Yeah, Who's yeah, yeah. That? no, no one. And, but, but but he is a classic auteur mm -hmm. uh, uh, filmmaker, yeah, and and he has his style and he has his ideas and most and he, of them. And he are hasn't so... made that many films, and he still yeah. retains that label. He really has not made that many movies. Yeah. And yeah. and but at the same time, he is very political. Of course, you can debate how blunt he is. Of course, uh, like Avatar, for example, is a classic anti-colonial, right message and of course you can make fun of it it's like, like the, and, yeah. the, 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 the dances with smurfs or something like that you can, <laughs> right. you can, you can make fun about or it's it fern, but, fern I mean, golly, right? but so many people i mean you always have to think about people that the people you're trying to send a message to uh who have no idea about academia or political debates or something like that who have never ever heard that there is even a country like france or something like that you know like yeah, you, yeah. you have to there, there are people who are just like don't know a lot but they watch the film they see what's going on in avatar and they have an uh they have a an emotional bonding with the main characters and they are on their side so it's I think, it's, no, it's i a, love it's what a you're, a lesson i love a what you're one. saying because so we both have met each other through filmmaker circles and I, I have a lot of filmmaker friends and you know, when you're, when you are surrounded by people like that, or even just people who are very analytical in their mind, you don't talk about stuff like you just said, you don't talk about movies like you just said, like the, the, the common person is left out and their experience with filmmaking is usually left out of the conversation. You know, if, does that make sense? Like, Oh, it does make sense. Yes, yes, I, like, exactly. For, for example, like I, I like managed a mom and pop video store, not like a chain, like a mom and pop video store for about five years of my life. And that taught me how much stuff, like what you're saying, like that taught me that like avatar actually does have value to some people. Like sure. they actually, like it might seem shallow as far as theme and, and, you know what it's trying to say to, to like somebody we might know uh somebody a mutual friend might be like avatar was crap the cg was terrible it was boring but to some people they'll see it and it'll actually teach them something they never thought in their life absolutely they, i mean like, you know it, i mean it, it's just like and it, it's it's like uh, I, I don't want to talk too much about james cameron but but <laughs> no that's uh, fine but, but i mean I, I, I like the guy and, yeah uh, yeah and uh and and for, for example, the whole sub like I mean, most people probably don't remember that, but I mean, we have to rem remind us the main guy in the film is a veteran who lost his legs and doesn't get new legs from the government. And right. it's possible. It's possible. It's just like a future version of like they're not paying uh, the vets new legs they're like the healthcare system is still very shitty and it's probably 200 years in the future right and 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 they lure him into the whole thing that they will give him his legs back and and i mean if there's someone sitting there like a veteran like a, of, of the iraq war or something like that seeing that like james cameron is really clever at putting things in his films that people uh, can relate to right and that 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 open up uh, like I mean, uh, the, the same military is also in the in the movie. And I haven't seen Avatar in about yeah. five years, but the same military is also the one trying to destroy this beautiful environment. That yeah, we're and it's, seeing in, for the in first that case, time. I think it's not even the military because I think it's it's kind of like it's almost like black black uh, black, black water or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's, it's like it's, it's it's a it's a it's a private security operation they're something held, like that. They're, but, they're held but, up by the government though yeah yeah right? but i mean the you same know. thing about uh, titanic for example titanic of course is a big spectacular movie about the ship going down but mm -hmm. it's also it's a nice love story but for me when i saw it i thought like fuck this is a really great film about the class differences in early 20th century right right like where you see in one ship how 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 the class structure works it's almost like this and like who gets ed a boat educational and who doesn't, right yeah who, 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 who gets a raft? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it's it's an educational film to a degree mm -hmm. uh, about about how the class society worked mm -hmm. in the times of titanic and to a certain degree still works like that and i think that that it he would be is, irresponsible yeah. to make a titanic movie that didn't show that yeah, you know what I mean. But but, but you could kind of like play that down, or you couldn't make <laughs> yeah. it part of the 
of the of of uh, of the love story because it's kind of like embedded because yeah. because she is is going to be married to this, this upper class guy and all that stuff. So I mean, it's 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 clever, yeah. And in yeah, yeah. the same like Abyss, the, the the Abyss, for example, is just like one of the best films I've ever seen about <laughs> divorce. I mean, the basic like, yeah, all basic, that stuff storyline is is about two two people who hate each other who got into a divorce, you know, like and and find back to each other mm -hmm. and there's a lot of alien stuff around it but it's a great <laughs> film about like reconciliation and 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 finding back to each other after the uh, after a breakup uh, yeah i don't know but uh, no yeah, I, yeah. i'm completely agreeing you're saying exactly what i would say so i'm i'm completely yeah. agreeing and the i don't know if this is a, kind of a side note but have you ever heard about the making of the abyss have you ever read about that or any anything close to it because uh, i'm it, such a nerd that i I would be ashamed of myself if I haven't seen a kind of like a making of or something like that. Is there like a specific story in there uh, that's interesting? Well, or? the only thing I can tell you that like the famous uh, story is that making that movie was a living hell for everyone. It was absolutely- Yeah, I, I like, can, I can, you can almost see it. <laughs> you can see it on screen. <laughs> but the, the famous story is that uh, uh, Ed Harris got so angry with James Cameron that he punched him in the face. Oh yeah, like and the, I like that. And the two, I like that. The two of them will never work together or talk to each other again because <laughs> of the really, abyss. I and, I, and, and that was also like I, I believe it was like around the scene where he has to basically get his dead wife back to life, and it's all there on screen, like the actual anger and frustration of making. Oh, the one where, he, where, he, where he, like <laughs> wake up! You've never quit a you goddamn bitch, man. You've never quit a goddamn thing in your life. <laughs> this makes sense. Like when he's this screaming, makes a lot of sense. he's screaming at James Cameron for this hell on earth, like this asshole that made yes. him shoot a movie underwater like it is completely insane you know like it didn't well, have to I be mean, this bad but it, I mean, it the movie's great so yeah yeah, yeah. You know. but i i have to say i i there is this uh there is still this notion that as an artist you have to suffer a little bit it is yeah. very like 19th century kind of way of like you only generate good work if you suffer and of course kubrick and all that stuff like having like like uh, i don't know like uh, the 137 uh, times yeah with with yeah, with the right. baseball bat and 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 Shelley Duval and and Nicholson and stuff like and 180 times so, yeah. yeah i mean i can see that at some point like if you're obsessed in that way you get out like an excellent well out this of is, somewhat, this is but, something i'd love to ask you because i've seen the stuff you've made and yeah. some of it i mean especially uh masking threshold yeah I mean, some of it is like I know that you spent time, a lot of time, and intricate like detail on a lot of this stuff. You threw your whole self into this. I'm guessing, like, for me, when I make stuff, I put all the pain and suffering on myself, and I try to keep everyone else happy. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm but I'm, I. That's why I don't make a ton of stuff because it actually I get like PTSD from it. I like have to finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can only, you know, you can only throw yourself into so many things if you're actually hurting yourself every time you're making something. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I totally agree with that. Yeah. I think that, I think it's, it's, it's one of the big and I, I mean, it's, it's a completely overused term in the meantime, but I think it's one of the big toxic myths mm -hmm. that, that only if you suffer yeah. uh, uh, on a movie set or if you suffered creating art, that the art will be great. Right, right. No, it, it, I'm this not is just like, this I'm is not just, saying that. No, no, no. I'm just no, saying that. Many I, people really, like people come to me and yeah. and, and say that. And, and for example, I've seen uh, one, like a couple of years, it's actually 15 years ago. Oh my God. So whatever. But we did, we did a musical and I, I actually hate musical, but sometimes <laughs> I like to do things that I hate right, uh, right. To, to get, to, 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 it's almost like an exorcism, but it's also something that I'd like to deal with. So in in Austria, it's it's something that's kind of irrelevant for, for 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 the U.S. But there was this very prominent Austrian figure in the 1960s and 1970s. He was, on the one hand, he was a crazy artist, but he was also like a gun lover, and he was kind of right wing, but also not. And he knew everyone in the Austrian government, and he kind of like blackmailed them. And then he blew up a ship in the Indian Ocean to get the insurance money <laughs> for like a uranium mill on that ship. And then they found out about it. And then half of the government had to uh, retire because they were all covering up for him. And then it came out that it was really true. Like, long story. Anyhow, so we made a musical about that guy. <laughs> and and uh, 
And, monochrome uh, did. Monochrome is the one. Yeah, that... monochrome okay. did. Yes, yeah. I, I I wrote it with with uh, one one of our other monochrome members and 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 did the whole inszenierung as we say in german like the whole the kind of like the staging of the whole thing and stuff so was this uh, a stage musical or a movie it was a stage musical okay, yes okay. was not it, there is a there's a i think there's a video of it but of course it it kind of the big difference between theater or stage right, and right. and you know like you, you know all that stuff yeah. and uh so so what happened is it was also the first big production of this new theater. It was not a new theater, but the theater in Vienna, they got a new director there, like a new head of, of the theater and all that stuff. And they were all a little bit chicken shit about, so, oh, this crazy. Um, so w- when they saw what they hired us for, uh, they kind of like, oh my God, what are they doing? Jesus Christ, we need a hit. We need a hit. And what are they doing? And this, and suddenly it's it's like the whole the whole musical is inside a computer. It's almost like Tron. <laughs> it's like it starts with with two uh, employees in a bank. One uh, one of the employees teaches the other employee uh, the, the the credit rating software, <laughs> and and they and they drag random data sets into the machine. For example, you know, like Kurt Cobain and stuff like that. So he he explains, uh, yeah, would Kurt Cobain get a credit in our bank or not or something like that so and then they drag in the data set of that that guy Udo Brock this like uh, this criminal i was talking about yeah. and the whole film is like this like one second of a couple of uh, subroutines in that computer system uh, like talking about the lives and times of that person and yeah. if he should get a credit or not and it's kind of it's 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 it was but the people in that theater they were like oh my god what is this what, what <laughs> is, uh, all right, what do you say the people but, in the theater? The people, the, like the people who hired you to do this or let you do this? With money? Pretty much, yeah. Like they, they the saw man. like another production of us, and they said like, "Oh, those guys are great. They're great. They they are creative. Let's hire them for 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 our one of the big opening shows that we're doing at our theater." And then they hired us, and then of course we did our thing, <laughs> and then they were like, "Oh my god, <laughs> uh, what are they doing?" And so what happened in the process? That's why I'm telling the whole story. What happened in the process was that that. Uh, it was almost it was almost unbearable to watch how those guys were, for example, treating the actress and actresses there. And there was like a way of in that theater. There was this like a uh, very aggressive, just like way of maybe like I, I didn't know that back then, but it seems that it, at many theater uh, companies or, or theater houses. At least in Austria or so, uh, there is a kind of like harsh tone, and 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 there is still this like strange idea of like you have to be kind of harsh to the actors, and you have to do this, and and if they start crying on stage, it's no problem because you know like it just like makes them feel the the role and the character and stuff like that. I, and, I have a pretty uh, thriving Baltimore th- theater community here, and I've seen some of that firsthand. So it does, yeah, it yeah. does happen so in other places. It's still like, I'm, I'm, uh, I think it's a little bit different in, in the film community than in the theater uh, yeah, yeah. community. I think in the theater community, it's, 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 it's worse than in the, in, in, in the, in the film community. There, there's more pre- I, think I think the there's more importance and pretension that comes with theater than with filmmakers. That, that, maybe. that could be. Yeah. And yeah. so when, when I saw that, I thought like, Jesus Christ, I never ever want to work like this yeah, yeah. anymore because it's also not the only thing that we probably could have done is just like walk out of the building and say like we're we're stopping this production. Yeah. But I mean I tried and I I I went to those guys and said like you just like let me do the thing. I'm directing the play. Don't sit in the back and scream at my actors or yeah, yeah. or that what they did is like they they were kind of like playing out the actors against each other. They were telling lies to the one actor about the other actor and stuff like that. So they would get into attention and stuff like horrible shit. And I learned most of that stuff only afterwards. And I thought like, no, that's not, that's not how you get good performances out of people. Also, that Uh, seems, that seems like you're doing the opposite thing of what you're trying to do, especially like, you're making yeah. this stuff so you can say something. So hopefully, put something good out there. You're not trying to yeah, yeah, ruin yeah. people. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely, you're, you're totally right. Now, you yeah, you, you yeah. cannot you cannot change the world, uh, you, by 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 just like hurting people, r- hurting people, and recreating yeah. the same power structures and the same bullshit again. Yeah. Right. And of course, at uh, oh, I lost my collection. Are you still there? Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you, but uh, I can. 
I, I, I don't see you. Oh, it, uh, it, did it turn off? I can see you. Oh, that, okay. Then I'm not, uh, because it's just saying trying to re, ah, there you are. There you're oh, back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm so, I was, I was <laughs> lost in space. Yeah, I was yeah. lost in space. So, and, it, it buffers yeah. sometimes. The internet, you know what I mean? What can you do? The internet. The internet. Down the internet. with it. It should be abolished. Um, the internet giveth, the, <laughs> the internet, internet taketh. Take away. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, yeah, I, but yeah. I, 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 no amount of abusing someone is worth anything I have to say. Yeah. I'm not going to do, I would never do that. And you know what no. I mean? I'm not drawn to I mean, people that would do that. Sometimes I have to say, sometimes it it happens because because you just like but but it's mostly a problem of communication people don't understand your intention or something like that or like of course i mean creative processes are very 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 sometimes you're just like tired or annoyed or something like sure, that sure. or you have like a 12 hour shooting day or something like that and at the very end your brain is half asleep already and you and then you 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 might kind of like have a, like a little, little, like a harsher tone, or you say like, "Ah, oh, what the fuck? Let, leave me alone," or something. But, uh, but th- I think that is part of the sometimes really extreme working conditions you have, especially yeah. in indie production stuff like that. Of course, uh, I would never tolerate something like that if it would be intentional. If people like get angry or something, or they're overworked or something, I mean, you can at least as best as you can try to make a better working environment. So where stuff like that doesn't happen, right. but sometimes, uh, I mean, I don't have to tell you anything about indie film production, but yeah. sometimes it's hard to avoid that tensions arise. Sure, or something you, like I mean, that, you but, argue, yeah, with yeah. Pe- you argue with people no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I, I'm a, I'm a pretty small time guy. Johannes, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm pretty, you know, I consider myself just like a very, very indie guy. So I make stuff with my friends. I try to make sure that my one goal is to, that they're friends when we're done. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, like, you know what I mean? Like maybe, and that's my downfall, I think, cause I'm not willing to use people. I'm not willing to get mad. I will, I'll find a way around it if I have to, I'll make yeah. that compromise so that we're not yelling at each other. Yeah. You so know? far I have like after 30 years of, of doing crazy ass projects and working with many, many people all, all around the planet, I have only, I think I have three or four people who do not want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> that's not bad. That's not bad. That's I think I'm bad. like, and I'm really working with a lot of people. So, yeah, yeah. so, and, and at least one or two of those people are just like, I don't know. I think I'm not the problem <laughs> they're dealing with, but, it's, but yeah. Yeah. Well, they, but of course, I mean, yeah. They, they yeah. might, they might ha- have a thing where like they have other filmmakers or other artists that don't want to talk to them either. And then they find out they're the common denominator. You know, yeah, they're the toxic problem, not not you. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, I like like one of the things, and of course, that's that's something that you learn over time. Is of course, you have to, uh, like. I mean, I I always try to do that, anyways. But but sometimes you have to just like be. If it yeah, it's it, it, the, the one the one rule I think I I really I really like. That, that's something you have to discover is like is you have to you have to acquire and i think that's nothing that you can know when you're 20 or 25 or right. something like that i think you you develop a certain form of emotional it, it sounds it almost sounds like a self-help book but you 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 learn to have a certain emotional intelligence over mm-hmm. time well, especially that, in projects I, and that's I that's something said what that's I say that, now, yeah uh, yeah 10 years ago uh, yeah. You know, I wouldn't say like, like back 10 years ago, I was like, oh, I'm going to make all this stuff and do all this thing. It would nothing. No one can stop me. Yeah, now yeah. I'm like, I don't want, I don't want anyone to hate me. I want, and I don't want anyone to feel bad. And you know, I don't want to use anybody. Yeah. I think you know? that's also like, sometimes, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it, it might be true for some people for some, for some not, but I think sometimes when, when I see people who are very, very successful or uh, in their thing is like, uh, and I have this feeling of like, well, the stuff that you're doing is good and I see the craftsmanship and I see or craftswomanship or whatever. And, uh, and I see like, like that, you know what you're doing and, and you deserve like the, the, the audience you have. But at the same time, I suspect that in German, you would say you have one person that geht über Leichen. So it's like a person that you're, you're walking, you're walking over corpses. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, 
Yeah. And yeah. and and you like you kind of almost feel that you feel like yeah okay like I understand why that person is very very successful because he doesn't give a shit about the last crew <laughs> he worked with. Yeah, you, you uh, always need to watch out for the person who's constantly creating a new group. I, absolutely, like, I, yeah. I've learned that over the years. Like if you have someone who every time they make something has to get a whole new band together. You should talk to the last band. Careful, alarma, alarma. <laughs> right, right. Now, the people that have the, have people that actually want to keep working with them, and they beg them to be in their stuff constantly. You know, one more time. That's the person I want to work with. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you yeah, know yeah. that they they're not walking over corpses. <laughs> yeah. You know? No. 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 But but I mean that's 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 pretty much like how I'm working because I mean. I, I founded like Monochrome, this mm. art tech collective, film collective, in 1993, and I was 18 years old. So that's that's like I was I was not even like done with high school when when I when I started. Actually, that. you know what? I uh, would have thought you were y way younger than you are. Okay, I, you actually you come off younger. You come like th thank you so much. Like no, physically it's because of Arnold Palmer. It's Arnold Palmer. I gotta get me a gallon <laughs> of that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and and so and and so. So monochrome that that group that I founded. So I was alone for two hours because back then I was very early. I was a very early adopter of of online technology. So I think I was online. I had a modem and was online in 1987 or 88. Holy crap! It was on the Fidonet. That, like that, the yeah, that wasn't even the internet yeah. No, no, that was yeah. not the internet. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. Fidonet and all that kind of stuff. And but that was interesting for me because I, I was like this like nerdy kid in the boondocks in, in, in lower Austria. And uh, I, I had the privilege of having access to a computer because my, my dad bought it for me. And uh, he was also like, I, I talked him into getting me a modem uh, so I could be online. So I suddenly was chatting with people from San Francisco or from London about like nerdy stuff online. And that, that kind of like also helped me in a very early age to 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 kind of like um, find out stuff that I would probably not have like had access to in that time and age in in in, in Lower Austria. So that was interesting. So I, that's that's when, why the internet is good. If you had absolutely to argue that that it. that's one of the absolute upsides of of the of, of, of the your, internet. The expanse of your reach and vision, and to know that your backyard is not the earth. No, no, it's not. You know? At the same time, it's also like uh, like people have the strange idea that they're competing with the whole internet. That's also a very bad way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. First of all, artistic creation is not a competition. Right. <laughs> it is It is a dance. Like the, the whole world is dancing. And uh, sometimes like one person gets the solo dance and sometimes another person. So that, that's, that's how it is. Film, film festivals and stuff come in, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. And, and, but, but yeah, but so, so I, I started early with that kind of stuff and I was interested, you know, like in science fiction and, and I watched Robocop and I was, I'm, I'm still very proud that I was like, I don't know, like a 12 or something when Robocop came out and I saw it and I immediately got the political message and I thought like, like, like wow, right off the bat, because this is, this is, this is like, and I still think that Robocop is one of the, you have it, you have, you have Robocop on the, uh, on, on your wall no. here. I think it's one of the best movies ever made. It's no, still, I, it's still you know, precise and, and interesting and it's working as an action film. It's working as a political commentary as, as, as a satire, like everything about it, it is just like it's perfect. Like I know I didn't have the same experience as you when I saw Robocop as a kid, I'm being honest right now. It was just cool and bloody yeah. and it was a robo cop. It was a robotic cop. And that's why yeah. it was great. It's yeah. not until I got to, you know, around the age of 25, maybe even 30, where I was like, Oh, wait a minute. This oh, is a minute. genius. This film. Yeah. yeah this, this film, film is, is about, it does uh, more uh, than just, economics. it's about Thatcherism. It's about like how, Capitalism, how, how corporate, cap corporate yeah. neoliberalism, capitalism is destroying our uh, social systems, our, our, our everything. You know, like, like, and I, mean, it, it's I so, look up it's so to perfect. it. Perfect. Like, how could it? How could something that genius exist? You know, like, yeah. Just to to be able to write that script, even the fact. I, that the I movie think I think out. that that Neumeyer and 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 Verhoeven like just like found each other because Verhoeven yeah. is such a such a classic European auteur cinema maker, and Neumeyer just like such a 
one of my great, favorites like too. nerd writer like yeah, it's yeah. just like they they, they just it's they also it. it's got you know a lot of my favorite films from that time they it has a bit of anger to it like it's yeah. angry at what's wrong in the world and it's yeah it, you know it doesn't hold back at all you know it i would put like a john carpenter right next to that so you know a lot of his films feel the same yeah. way. there's an, there's an yeah. anger to them it's like a fuck you almost yeah and, you and then also like talking about james cameron i mean yeah, it's just right. like aliens aliens is just exactly. like like yeah, I mean, this is just it's there's a, so much commentary in that film. This if you is, watch yeah. Aliens and you don't walk out of that being suspicious of corporations, yeah, and corporate greed and corporate, you know, like uh, them being a person and stuff, you should worry, like because yeah, you're not yeah, understanding you should, you should what you're watching. Worry. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, right. No, <laughs> no, it, and and so so so, I mean, I absorbed all of that. And I it's, think it's really uh, evident in Trace Route too, by the way. Like, I, oh yes, yes. Like, I, think, I mean, I'm very, I'm very outspoken about yeah, that stuff. No, but in Trace Route. Just it's like not, saying. it's not just how outspoken you are about it. Like, uh, I, Trace Route's available to watch, right? To be, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on Vimeo. You it's can, on Vimeo. You can, okay. Uh, yeah. If for anyone, that, it, it's a, it's it's on Pirate Bay as well. I cannot <laughs> stop pirated. people going to Pirate Bay, like whatever. Yeah, but there's I have this like fake FBI warning in it. Uh, so if you want to donate me a couple of bucks uh, via PayPal or something like that, it's in the film, so you can also download <laughs> it on Pirate Bay. But if you want to go the official way, you go to Vimeo on demand and you buy it there. <laughs> I'm recommending they do, um, yeah. but like it's not just because you're admitting it. You do admit it at like the beginning of Trace Route. You tell your history and stuff. What I really liked though was like you didn't need to admit it because the rest of the film, all of your genius like asides are so pop culture knowledgeable. <laughs> like you oh, yeah. know what you're talking about completely. Like I know you're also questioning pop culture and what it's done to us and what it means to us, but like. I remember watching it and I watched it months ago. So excuse me if I'm getting anything yeah. wrong here, but I remember just every time you have one of your audible asides in it, I'm like, yeah. Oh my God, like this guy knows his movies. It's not just, it's not just <laughs> like a, it's not just, I'm a geek. You're like, no, you're proving it in that movie. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Like I can <laughs> no, tell it was, it was definitely a film I wanted to make a, a bit about that, about like the, where I'm coming from. Uh, of course, where I'm going to, or where nerd culture in general is going to. And, and, I wanted to make a film that is fun to watch for nerds to see all the like the hints and the, all the Easter eggs that yeah. I, I put in there. But at the same time, it should also be something that is watchable for someone who is not a nerd and wants to learn about nerd culture. And I've seen many people who are like not 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 nerdy at all, but still enjoy it still, in some way. Get, because... It's it's hard to it's a good thing to show other people because like I come from a family where no one's a nerd. And no one understands what I'm talking about. So I usually, usually just don't talk. But like, it's hard to describe to people why this stuff takes over our lives. And it becomes part of a piece of our personality and yeah. who we are. You know what I mean? Like, why why do we wear things that have symbols on them from movies or TV shows and stuff? Why is that so ingrained in us? You know, yeah. a lot of people it's, don't it's, understand it's, that. They don't. Yeah, it's, it. it's, it's a different form. It's, it's an interesting global form of tribalism because yes, usually yeah. tribes tribes are something like you meet with your buddies in the bar and uh, every tuesday and sit around and drink a beer and chat and that's a form of a tribe that you have yeah but i'm i'm for example i'm i'm i, I wouldn't say that i'm tracky but i definitely like star trek Same, and yeah. uh, i i'm 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 on the, all the star trek shit posting facebook <laughs> groups and all that stuff <laughs> And I like that, but I have this feeling of like, well, I'm part of this tribe and I don't know. And, and there are millions out there who are part of my tribe and I don't know them. But still, I knew if I would walk into a bar, I would have an immediate rapport with a right. person there. I would know what to say and what to do. And then suddenly it, it would work. So it's, it's, it's this like, it's, it's, it's this dispersed, strange global tribe no, uh, and sub tribe and and I, yeah it's, i it's, promise yeah. I, i'm not trying to keep bringing it back to robocop i'm, I'm not trying yeah. to do that no, but, no, no, you can uh, yeah but i wore i don't know if i told you this but i wore a robocop hat for 15 years like like i'm wearing this is actually a canon films hat but i wore uh. a robocop hat for 15 years and every you know in my big i have giant circles artistic circles i run with everything I feel like whenever some, even in public, whenever somebody would see me, they go, "Yo, RoboCop," and they would just feel like instantly endeared to me. It was yes, because like, no, it's a, movie, it's a beloved movie. You know what I mean? Like I can't, I, I actually that, can't that, see that, it. That's my. It's the. It's a Nostromo hat. Oh, it is. Okay, it's awesome. Alien. It's alien. And that's my yeah. favorite cap 
I, I, yeah, man, I, yeah. I like I like nerdy nerdy hats. Yeah, yeah. And I have probably like forty of them. But I would say like ninety five percent of the time I'm wearing this hat, and it's now I always it's strange I always buy it at one online store here in Central <laughs> Florida in Longwood. Uh, it's they they, they, are, they just like have the perfect. The, the, I, I think they they put it together. I think it's just like some random cap. Yeah, yeah. And they 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 glued a patch on it. No, no. Uh, the, it doesn't the matter. Quality of the cap matters. But, it does. Yeah. It does. But but yeah. I think it's now iteration number six or seven. Uh, like I wear them until they fall apart, and then I get a new one. Yeah. yeah I want and uh, but it's the it's the thing. It's like I'm I'm technically speaking. Oh yeah. Ah yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. nice. Which, which is very uh, reminiscent of Robocop, yeah. the OCP symbol too. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so so I'm te- technically speaking, I'm way more a fan of aliens than of alien. But I really like the design very much. And when I walk on the street. People look at me and ask me, "Are you like some kind of veteran? What's that?" And and every now and then, someone says, "Like ah," and and you see kind of like the the, the knowing well, smile, you know. And that yeah, that's it, it. It has the same effect of like if you make somebody laugh, they love you forever. Yeah, you know, you're not doing that exactly, but what you are saying is, "Hey, if you like this, we're down." Yeah, and it really it sounds so. At simple. least at least I. Uh, I know what the first five minutes of our conversation would be. <laughs> yes, right. That, right. That's it. And then I might find out that that person is a Republican and I might start <laughs> to disagree on politics or something like that. But still, the interesting thing is like if you talk about alien or aliens to a Republican, uh, there are some interesting talking points that you could make talking about uh, like the subversive way of like how, how movies can also politicize you right i could have like a meaningful conversation about aliens with a republican and i think we would not hate each other afterwards right right yeah and i would still we would still have seen the same movie and like the same things about it but i would probably have showed him a different way or different perspective on on that specific film i I, know i've I've had conversations of, I mean, we're, I'm using RoboCop as the example, but I've had conversations with people like that where you start talking about it and then you kind of learn that they don't understand what RoboCop's about. They they think yeah. it's about a robotic cop. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's just the surface movie and then you're like, oh, you don't get it. And then you find out they yeah. are Republican. <laughs> so it always astounds me how how people do not, because it's so blunt anyways, but it astounds me how people do not get the message of Starship Troopers, that there are still people out there who think, oh, wow, the guy like who looks like a Gestapo officer who punches like, like, like who sticks a giant needle into the face <laughs> of the alien, like is the good guy, you know, like, or, or it's or Doogie that, Hauser, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Starship Troopers is a hard sell for some people. I love it. I'm not, I'm not. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I think Starship Troopers is presented in a way where you can watch it and say the heroes are did the right thing and they're fighting for the right cause. Yeah. And it works. Like it's a, it's a, but it's you can a also, fascist romp. Right. But you can see But I mean, the same when you or me watch yeah. Starship Troopers, we're seeing something that's terrible happening also. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like we're but people, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, some people see, 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 like cheer the fascism in it, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. They, they yeah. don't see; they they just see it yeah. as it's sci-fi. It's the future. This is how the future yeah, is. Yeah. Like, but I think, I, I think we're tackling a really important thing here because, of course, all the stuff, all the subtle nuances, all the things that you can put into a film, of course, can be misunderstood. There is no way that you create a product that you want to have a certain message Mm -hmm. uh, that that message always will be delivered. It it just doesn't work. I mean, you can try to maximize that, but there's a good example. I'm not sure you're probably familiar with the yes, man, the, the, the movie. The, the, the movie or like the, the arch group, the, the, the guys who, yeah, did, okay. it's called The Yes yeah, Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's called uh, the, the, the Yes Men. They, they did for, uh, they, they still do very interesting political uh, pranks or stunts and stuff like that. And uh, they did one specific stunt in 2004. And it's still, it's still very nice. Uh, so what happened was that uh, in 1984, so 20 years before that, if you if you go back to 2004, 20 years before 2004, uh, there was a big chemical accident in India, the Bhopal accident. And that was caused by Union Carbide. 
okay. uh, one of the really bad bad companies. In the meantime, it doesn't. It's not called Union Carbide anymore. Uh, it is called uh, Dow, uh, Dow Chemical. So Dow Chemical bought oh, uh, Union okay. Carbide. Yeah, yeah, and. They never paid any reparation to the people in India, and many, many people died. Many people are still sick from that chemical accident uh, in Bhopal in India. And so, what the yes men wanted to do is they wanted to kind of like uh, shed light at that whole thing. So, what they did is they created a fake uh, corporate social responsibility website for Dow Chemical where they put the information on that now finally, after 20 years, Dow Chemical is paying billions of dollars of reparation to India, to, to Bhopal, because it is time for us to do the right thing. Right. And because of that, the BBC contacted that website. And of course, the website was owned by the Yes Man. So uh, the BBC wrote an email to the Yes Man saying, don't you want to come to the BBC studio live to talk about how Dow Chemical is helping in Bhopal right now, yeah? And they said, yes, we'll do that. And then one of the yes men was live uh, on live BBC television saying, uh, like, pretending to be a Dow Chemical spokesperson and saying, like, yes, we'll finally pay billions of dollars to Dow Chemical and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, uh, of course, that was all the fake. And uh, a couple of minutes later, the, the yes men... Uh, released a statement that it's a prank and that, of course, uh, they they did a they did like they they pretended to be a Dow Chemical and all that stuff. I think there was even a dip in the Dow Chemical uh, stock price and all that stuff, at least for a couple of minutes. And uh, and it's still one of the big uh, political art stunts or activist stunts of the early. 2000s and there are still art books writing about it and and the new york times wrote about the whole thing and uh like it was a, a big deal and it kind of put the yes men on the map in in terms of political activism and art and all that stuff right but at the same time and i kind of like the idea and i kind of like what they did but at the same time uh i would say that 99 percent of the people who saw that interview on live bbc television still to this day think that Dow Chemical is a good company and they finally paid money to the poor people in India. And, uh, and for, for people like us who are like knowledgeable about that kind of stuff, who read the New York Times or are interested in art history or interested in political activism, stuff facts, like that. Or in facts. <laughs> yeah, or in facts, yeah. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they, they uh, like we know what went on and we know why the yes men did that and, and the purpose of the whole thing. But most people out there who saw that on television, uh, like the yes men pretty much did free PR work for Dow Chemical. Right. right. Uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to be careful, I think, in what format, in what medium, in what way you like, like spread information. Also this information, I think that this information can be, a, a valuable tool, but you have to be super careful about it. And you have to know what you want to do. And you have to know in what context you're putting the whole thing, because otherwise you could just like, uh, just like do the exact opposite of what you want to do. You could, you could end up creating yeah, a whole stuff. Like, exactly. So uh, you could be uh, like, uh, like I, I'm not sure how many people who saw Starship Troopers right. still think it is a, it is a, a, an advertisement campaign for fascism. Uh, or, or who not, but, but, you know, yeah, I know. I think, I mean, so with Starship Troopers, I think the, the, it's come, it's come full circle. And I think that the knowledgeable uh, cinephile now knows that. And I think it's kind of, I don't think Starship Troopers has added to a level of fascism in any way. No, 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 no. But, but I would say I mean, the I would, question, yeah, I was going to say like, how, how, how blunt do you have to be or how, how straightforward? Right, right. Because I mean, I was thinking like, I, I remember back then, in 1997 or something or eight when that came out yeah i remember seeing it and i was i was like how old was i uh probably just like in my early 20s or something and i remember and i was kind of like an uh, antifa and i was like classic antifa was right, part right. of like was a punk and all that stuff so so i saw the film and i thought like bah this is like in the, my, my first you, you reaction it was I, I I hated it because it was so banal, you know, like in a certain way. It was so like, oh, my God. Well, it's kind of status but, but, quo completely on the surface, right? Yeah, yeah. 
but but I really liked to learn and love it over the years because I thought like it's it's it, it takes some cojones to to make that in the in, in the in the US studio system and and present that and cast all the people that look like straight from Beverly Hill 90, 92 10 or something you know like there's and, and there's forget, something really nice about it <laughs> he he wasn't even it, not just the cojones to make that movie but he was also making it from a book by subverting what the book is and the book is straight up fascism pro fascism yeah. Or it's it, at least hardcore. Uh, yeah, it's it, it, like it's high, super right wing libertarianism. Yeah, I guess. yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Heinlein is he has yeah. never been at, at no, all no, like no. in line with yeah. what the movie. He said. was interestingly one of the first polyamorous people, <laughs> uh, like who wrote about it and was open about it. That's interesting. So he was yeah. like in his personal life, he was very he was very uh, uh, like liberal about the stuff that he did. But, but I mean, his politics are just like, horrible. he's like, earn your citizenship. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I was yeah. going to say uh, where, what you're saying about Sarsha troopers. I think to some degree, culturally that effect has happened with other movies. Maybe you could argue like fight club or something like that. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Where, where the line yeah, fight, fight club is so fight club it's is a, such a, yeah, it's, yeah. It's had such a weird yeah. effect where it's like the, the there's a subculture of people who don't understand what yeah, the satire yeah, of Fight yeah, Club is, yeah. and they've become toxic, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the snowflake itself has become yeah. part of the lexicon, but not of the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And if you if you watch Fight Club, it's it's from such a blessed period of time. It's just like the the, 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 the like the like Soviet style communism collapsed. There was no nine eleven yet. Right, it wasn't right. this like couple of years where everything looked so bright and you know, like the, the end the end of history you know like and and you know, like everything is great we won and everything is super duper and then the wave and, was just about to crash right back down and everything yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and, but... and 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 fight club is like a film specifically i think about that time and about that mindset and about that he he literally says in the movie we have no great war we have no great yeah, suffering yeah, like yeah yeah it just wait a few years. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. literally yeah, yeah. it was like it was ninety. What was it ninety nine? No, no, no. you, you you don't have to punch priests in the face on the street. You will go to Iraq <laughs> in six years. You know, and then you're gonna have the housing housing market crash. And guess what? A pandemic's coming in about ten years <laughs> yeah. after that. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's really an odd time, and it. I think that people keep applying it to the modern day, like you're saying. Yeah. And it's, you're missing the point, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you're also missing the point that you're supposed to be with Tyler Durden. You know, no. he is not to be admired <laughs> in no, any no, way. No, no, yeah. it, no. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. A friend of mine who used to be a punk and a very left-leaning person, mm -hmm. in the meantime, is just like, I mean, I could probably really call him a fascist in the meantime. Like he is like right wing, like Austrian guy. He he he's right wing now. He removed all the stuff that he ever recorded. He had this like video video blog kind of thing uh, like ten years ago, and he removed all of that from YouTube. So he's he really he eradicated all his left leaning or liberal stuff online, and he's now really like a, a right winger. And he and I always found his obsession with Tyler Durden very strange mm -hmm. and in a certain way it makes sense because i think a lot of the stuff that he was talking about and the way how he expressed stuff and how he dressed there, there is kind of like a like that there, 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 there was that the hidden fascism was already lurking there yeah and it was just like waiting to 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 burst out and i think with all the stuff that's happening now with covid and all this, I mean, I don't have to tell you anything about, you know, like uh, the January 6th and all that stuff. So, I mean, right. there's like, there, there's so much, there was so much uh, bottled up fascism everywhere that it's just like, it, it's, it's so, it's, it's so like, I don't want to say interesting, but it is, it is definitely eye opening to see like how, with how much pressure that fascism is bursting out of all this, like, bottled up right, bottles right. Are you, are you, you're like, saying like like they didn't realize they were thirsting for it and now they're getting that they're getting it yeah like they haven't had they haven't had yeah. like a, a no, actual no. trip it's really fascism. like it's 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 really it's like like trump 
Trump and, and, and his ilk, they, they, are, they are like the mentos that you put, put into the Coke can, you know, uh, the, the Coke bottle. It's just like, it's just a little, it's just a little mentos, but it has a lot of... <laughs> a lot uh, of foamy spray come out yeah, of it, like a big yeah. orgasm just flying out. Oh my out. God. <laughs> yeah, well, the, look, I we don't have to talk about this, but I kind of want to ask, like, because, I mean, I know you're in Florida right now, but... How does how do Austrians view what's happening in America? Like I, I don't get to ask this. Well, often. I mean, we have our own problem. It's not it's not that Austria is also doing like a one hundred percent perfect uh, <laughs> right. job in, in containing all of that. I mean, when I return, like when when I just, I, like, I meant I didn't even mean COVID. I meant like Trump. But with Trump, uh, yeah. I mean, it is interesting. So it is that I think that that what Trump has definitely. On, on, on the level of world politics, or let, let's call it world debate, like how people talk about politics, I think Trump really had an effect on the way how... So so the whole thing that Trump is just like completely immune against truth, right? or that he's just like spinning whatever he wants, or that he's just like repeating a million times that... That the election was stolen from him, and but but and suddenly like thirty percent of Americans believe it. Right, right. That also works in Austria, and that also works in Germany. There are so many people out there uh, who who have this this who, who feel entitled now to to do kind of like the same thing, or or feel entitled not to not to think twice about about opening their mouth about a certain thing. So I think that like a certain, uh, like, uh, I'm not sure that it's, it's the same, the same idiom in, uh, in, in English, but there's a, uh, in German it's called the dam ist gebrochen. So, so the dam, the dam is broken and the yeah, dam no, is just like, it. Yeah, it's, no, is it the same thing? It's the same thing. I mean, um, I've heard it like, uh, Pandora's box is open. Yeah. Or something and, like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. The things that have happened with Q and COVID and the election, yeah, so that, that cannot so, be put back. In yeah, any just form. just just an example. I think that in general, uh, people in Central Europe have a better like uh, public school education and all that stuff. I mean, going to universities is still free or almost free. I mean, it's only I mean, we, like I think a, like a semester at the university in Austria is like 500 euros or something like that. So it's uh, it's very it's, it's very payable. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. affordable and stuff like that. Yeah. So there is. I think that 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 the school system and all that stuff, and of course with all the social health care and all that stuff, it's it's definitely way better uh, in 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 uh, in Central Europe and Austria and Germany. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, we are not completely immune against that kind of disinformation strategies. Right, right. Uh, for example, a good friend of mine, I haven't seen him in ten years. Uh, so he grew it like so. So my my grandparents, uh, they used to live in this little little town uh, outside of of, of uh, Vienna, and I was always going there and building tree huts and all that stuff. And so he's one of the people in my age uh, who grew up with me back then, and he's now a farmer. So like he's he's not he's he's kind of wealthy. He has he has a good like organic farming business. And uh, I was in that little town a couple of days ago before I came to the U.S. and uh, and he saw me there uh, in my car and stuff. And he came by and said, "Like, ah, Johannes, uh, good to see you. I haven't seen you in ten years. What are you doing?" And then I told him that I'll be going to the to the U.S. and that I'm doing location scouting for films. And so we talked about filmmaking because, as I mentioned before, filmmaking is something very magic to people. And oh yeah, you yeah. Especially that, that, that you make no films, effect. they just like want to know and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then he he looked at me and said like Johannes you you're such a clever person and you make films and stuff like that so so how do you how do you believe did they manage to do that to to steal the election from Trump and I said oh, like I don't boy. I don't believe I don't believe that they stole the election from Trump I believe that Trump just by repeating the lie so many many times people suddenly think that there must be something true about it so there is a, a, a like a that there's there, there's there's a core of truth to it and right, I, right. but i don't think no there is like all like even like the, the the republicans sitting in the election committees none of them like reported anything about irregularities it is not it is not stolen <laughs> and he said like oh really okay interesting okay so like if you say that okay then i'll think about it but mm -hmm. okay 
okay, yeah, and that's it. And that was a, just like some random conversation I had with an old, you old, old friend of you mine. You understand how rare that is, right? Like that's it is it is kind of rare, rare. but I yeah. mean the guy probably also trusts me because right. of, I, I don't know yeah no it's but, good I'm not but, trying to say it's not good it's yeah. just very rare but 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 of course that kind of stuff is also I mean that like th there are no boundaries for that kind of stuff and if you go online I mean the problem is that uh, that's also a quote by 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 Michel Foucault that I that I mentioned before is that there's uh, and I really like it it's uh, it's not important what you want to know, but why you want to know it. And I, I, I think that is very true. It is like whatever you want to, to like, like if you, if you, if you're a scientist researching uh, something, what is your main goal in your research? Is the main goal to be rich and famous and have a tobacco company hire you for your expertise? Or do you want to advance knowledge? So what is the end goal of, so why are you doing something? Why you could, are you, you making apply, a movie? Why are, yeah. You could apply that, what you just said to like the average citizen in America right now. Like, yeah, yeah. cause they're all doing, they're all doing research and yeah. they're, they're all talking about research constantly. Yeah. But, and but, they're but doing they're research, researching. To, but they're no. all, now, the quality of the research aside, yeah. they're doing research to disprove the other side. Exactly. So they, they already have a preformed opinion and they are yeah. trying to find... Uh, it's not to find the truth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to find evidence for their for their belief system, which is, a, of course, like what all religious people do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, like creationists and all that stuff. So, as I mean, right. I, I'm not getting into the creationist no, no, debate no, please, because... Please. because it's it's kind of like it's I would call it a soft target. It's always like all the liberals talk about creationism because it's so stupid. I I, uh, I, I don't know about you, but like I feel like that whole like debating with religion thing ended yeah. for me in America. I had my moment with that, and I think George, after the George Bush years, that really all just melted away. I don't feel I feel like like the Kent. Remember like the creationist museum. I don't want to talk about it, but the creationist yeah. museum and stuff, and that all popped up during the Bush years. The really religious yeah. right of America. Once he was out, once Obama came in, I feel like those debates kind of melted away. I don't know, maybe if it was yeah. my youth melting away, but I, I felt like that is something where, I mean, the right, if the, if the right is holding up a man who is not religious in the least, we don't need to talk about it anymore, do we? No, 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 no. I think <laughs> yeah. I think you're very true. Uh, you, 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 you. I think there's 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 truthiness in in in, 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 in your nice callback. In, in, yeah. yeah, yeah, in your in your. Uh, and the thing that you said before that 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 the right is kind of like uh, the, the right wingers have the better super glue. There's something that holds them together as a unified front. And they and they've proven they don't even need the Bible anymore. They yeah, just yeah, need, yeah, they not just at all. Need no, something no, no. Else. Yeah. They know that Trump is kind of like the unifying factor, and it doesn't even matter that he's a sexual predator. And of course, that does not up at rapist. all. He's a rapist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah straight yeah. up rapist. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And of course, like nobody in a church would say like it is totally forbidden for you to rape and pillage and whatever. Right. Uh, of course, they don't like that, but they take it into. It's just like yeah, the guy is helping our overall cause, so that's why we're supporting him. I think if and, it, yeah. yeah, like I have members in my family who they're, they're. I think they they vote for Trump solely because of the issue of abortion. If yeah. he can actually get that done, then any of his own sins don't matter. Anything he's done doesn't matter to get because to the, the end, cause. Is so the cause is so, so big, right? You it's know, it's that, bigger yeah. than Trump. If if Trump can get things done, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a very odd situation. Yeah, it's weird. It's 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 really like like they're treating him like a prophet. You know, like the prophet has a purpose on earth. And even if it's a failed prophet or uh, like just it doesn't matter. Like there's this like weird orange guy and he just like nothing about him is conservative. You know, like <laughs> nothing like, at all. He, he, nothing at all. He is a very, very hedonistic, gold plated. If anything, living rooms kind of guy. That, oh, my God. Not to get, but, down, I mean, not to, get but, to the nitty gritty, but like yeah. Howard Stern has said like his he knows Trump and he's like. All the people that Trump worships are like Hollywood elite, and now they all hate him. Yeah, and none of this ever made any sense because these are the people that he was he worshipped throughout his life is to be a famous Hollywood yeah. figure, and now he's and now, and now he only has like what's what's the what's the guy's name? Scott John Baio. Wood. 
Yeah, oh. uh, Scott Bayo and James Woods and uh, James Woods, James Woods, John yeah, Voight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's got like uh, John. Like I always mix them up. I always like mix up the John Voight and and the James Woods. So it's always John Woods. <laughs> it's it's John like Woods. the same person for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Deliverance guy, and then you know, James yeah, yeah. Woods, he's done a lot yeah. of stuff. But I mean, yeah. I have I have to say that that's uh, to a certain degree what what, what we're talking about the mm-hmm. whole thing about the truth that people are way more interested in getting their belief system validated than really interested really in something like, like truth. I think that is, I think to, to a certain degree, also kind of like very much the center of, of, of my new film, of, of, of Masking Threshold. Right, right, yeah. Because they could, like, yeah. if you compare it, for example, to, to, to Trace Route, Trace Route is a very positive and optimistic it's it's also very critical but it's a it's a documentary about about the positive aspects of nerddom and masking threshold is first of all it's not a documentary it's a it's a straight up horror drama or psychological drama or however you call it but it, it's, I, it's, it's almost it's, johannes it's almost undescribable of what it is which is great like is, I, yeah, I, I don't like, know where I'm, to put it in a category you know what i mean like it is yeah i mean uh for me it's yeah it's a yeah, it's a film about about this nerd character and all his beliefs and all his things that that he holds dear, like the the science scientism and and skeptical belief and all that stuff. And he dislikes his 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 esoteric mother and all that stuff. And and I don't want to spoil too yeah, much, I don't spoil but of course anything. everything everything is kind of like being turned around in the end. Uh, and uh, yeah, but I mean, it's. Uh, I, I wanted to say, like, I from a filmmaking perspective. And I this, pro- this I, I don't even know if you want me to say this, but it's probably the the best masterpiece of insert shots I've ever seen in my life. Like just really? from, I'm just talking filmmaking right now, just like oh, yeah. actual I mean, filming. Th- like I've never seen so many masterfully pulled off insert shots in my entire life. So it's just, well, it is. I it mean, is gorgeous. I, I've never I've I've never really m- measured like like the screen time, but but. I mean, I would say like sixty percent of the film are macro shots. You yeah, know, like no, everything it's, is yeah, yeah. I, I at first, you know, when the film opened up, I'm trying not to spoil anything. I thought that was the opening, and then I was like, oh, this is the this is the movie, and then I was like, oh my god, these are all pulled off. I have seen, I have not seen a film, a reg like a film that's uh, tr- more traditional that has insert shots. I was like. Usually, insert shots are not pulled off like this no. good, and They're you never, so you never see the made. face of the, never see the face of the main character. <laughs> no, well, I, the funny thing is, I know what you look like, so yeah, I can it's always me. Do, it's it's whenever, me. Whenever it's you, me. Whenever your your head is shown, even from the back, I'm yeah, like, yeah, of course, that's Johannes' hair. Of course, it's me. Yeah, no, that the thing is like <laughs> that, that was, of course, too. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, of course, that's 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 one of the things because I kind of had this idea for this film, and I knew that it would be kind of hard to get. Uh, like I knew that I could get a couple thousand euros in Europe from art grants, you know, like yeah. or video video grants or or experimental film grants. But I, I knew that I, I I wanted to do a feature film. I knew it's like I had the script like in, for for ninety minutes and all that stuff. But I knew I would never be able to go to a classic standard movie grant in Austria and say like, please give me money for this film because they would have said what. You want to do a film that's like sixty or seventy percent macro shots, <laughs> and you never see really the face of the guy, and like it's it's. Uh, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, like like I, I, they wouldn't have given me the money for that. So my idea was like, how can I pull that off in the most efficient way? But I mean, I knew from the beginning, and that wasn't even a deliberate decision because of the money. But I knew that the whole film will be set in one room. It's just like it's it's this like microcosm of that guy where he kind of like seals himself up from the world. You're literally and where, you're doing like five things in a, f- a feature film, which you're you're not supposed to do. Exactly, exactly. Like, like I almost everything. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, so it was it was it was it was in a certain way easy to film because I had one room in my apartment in Austria in yeah. Vienna. That became the horror room, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is this like uh, like uh, uh, American like uh, uh, like garage kind of like room setting. Uh, it was where like your I... uh, your Dexter kill room, you know. Ex- exactly, and <laughs> yeah, and yeah. everything is in there. So and it was also easy to shoot then because 
I mean, we shot the film over like three, four, five months or something like that. And my friend, uh, the, 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 the camera guy, like uh, Florian, so whenever he had time for two or three hours, he came by and we shot a couple of more scenes. And then I just like left the room as it is because we kind of shot the whole thing chronologically. So it's... Uh, we just like kept going and i thought right, like right. at some point the film will be done and it was after i think three or four months yeah. of like shooting uh like an afternoon here an afternoon there a night here a night there so it was it was easy to, to make it from a production standpoint and at the same time like but of course the films somehow as all films like i think that non-filmmakers don't realize how important editing is so like oh, God, the editing yeah. of a film is just like like uh, there are so many films out there who are so bad because the editing is so bad and you just you just like oh my god like this is just like it would be such a perfect film could couldn't they have like had another person just like doing the editing for that? <laughs> yeah. and it's just like ah no i i ah. if i can if i may praise the editing too like i was gonna say that like you, you took the words out of my mouth yeah. like like for for the movie you're talking the movie you made like yeah yeah, yeah. uh i what i noticed is it's it's not just a bunch of insert shots. I don't want, I didn't want. No, 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 no. Like no. But, but, I mean, but they're, I, no, I totally they're very, they're very pointed. That. They're shown at a very specific time for what is being said and what the theme is. I do. I did recognize that. And it's really well pulled off. So yeah. congratulations and, on that too. And, in a certain way, it's it's uh, like I'm like trying not I have to this, spoil like, anything when I talk. No, 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 no yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's a uh, it's uh, in 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 my my little PR blurb. I say it's like a. a it's like a mixture of, of of a YouTube channel and an unpacking video, and yeah, uh, and that. like Lovecraftian existential dread. So it's <laughs> it's 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 all of that together. It's, I, uh, okay, can I give you another slant on how I, I would almost sell uh, sure. it? Sure. It is almost like my dinner with Andre fucked a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With one okay. with one host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like because oh, yeah, because yeah. you know to some degree it's we're hearing the inner mon we're hearing the guys inner monologue and then yeah and I was like I was like this could be listened to and it the visuals are absolutely a hundred percent important but it's still a work of art if you just had the audio like that is true I kind of wanted to do that because yeah. usually I I I. Uh, one one of my good friends uh, like I, I there, there's one film I really like and it's. Uh, it's it's probably something very Austrian uh, to say that or German, uh, but but uh, I'm 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 a big fan of Werner Herzog. I like Werner Herzog. I mean, he yes. does did he, he he did some really shitty films as well. I have to say, but but hey man, but he, most he, of he's the in stuff Star he Wars does, now. He, Everyone likes Werner Herzog. He's in Star yeah, it's Wars, just like, right? He he yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> nice yeah, right. nice yeah. nice. And he was on Simpsons. Yeah, the best on thing Simpsons. is like, the the best thing is like when the Simpsons asked him. I'm not sure if I believe that, but when when The Simpsons asked him if he could be like a voice actor and play himself on The Simpsons, he said, yes, yes, I'll do that. No problem. Uh, and he didn't know what The Simpsons were. Oh. Werner Herzog <laughs> did amazing, not know The Simpsons. And how, how is this even possible? <laughs> but right. that, that, that makes it very nice. Yeah. Uh, like. Of I course. have to think about. I, I don't, want, I don't want him to know what the Simpsons are. I, I'm yeah, happy yeah, that he yeah, did. Yeah. You know. So because I'm in Florida right now, and just like yesterday, we went to this little state park, Wekiver Springs State Park, and it's very lush, and there's this like nice little uh, like stream, like it's a it's a source of water, and you can swim there. And but there's lots of lush green around it, and there are these like classic American state park trails where where they built a little. A little walkway through the jungle, and you can go through the jungle and and see that. And whenever I walk through it, walk through a jungle, I hear Werner Herzog in my head, <laughs> uh, because there's this scene in uh, in uh, and that that's the film uh, I, I wanted to talk about. Uh, it's called uh, uh, I think I'm not sure what the germ what the English title is. My 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 best fiend or my, my best enemy or something like that. It's where Werner Herzog talks about his work with Klaus Kinski. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's a documentary where Werner Herzog explains how crazy it was to to work with work with, with, with Klaus Kinski, yeah? and and there are a couple of scenes in there where where uh, where you see uh, like backstage footage of Werner Herzog and stuff like that, and Werner Herzog stands in the jungle, and he has this very Bavarian accent, and he says like, "Yeah, I I'm in the jungle. I like." 
I like the jungle. I love the jungle. But I do love it against my better judgment. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever I walk there, it's like, yeah, I like it, but I like it against my better judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so so that's that's uh, that's Werner Herzog. I forgot again what I wanted to talk about. But so there's uh, we uh, I forget. Yeah, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we're, oh how did we get to Werner Herzog? It's okay. Oh yeah. That, yeah. But it's, it's it, but in general, I guess in in general, I think it's it's uh, it's the. I think it's I think it's the the the, the craziness of the nerds, I would say. And for me, Werner Herzog is also a nerd, a very specific kind or sub genre of nerddom. Not he, he doesn't fall in the standard what we would say a nerd is now. No, but he no, is a no. Nerd. But but he's very obsessive about things and and does stuff. And he's like a nerd of nihilism. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 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 he is and yeah. uh and and yeah now like I, I could i could talk for hours about that but in this yeah anyhow so there's there's this there's this scene about 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 the jungle that i really like and so what what was interesting f- about the film like masking threshold mm-hmm. which is it's i have to say it's kind of hard to talk about it without spoiling yeah anything. That, so I, I, just... I watched it last night and the, for my first thought was how do you talk at all about this film without ruining the entire thing yeah i don't yeah. want to give anything I mean, up what I, could, what I could talk about is of course uh it's about obsessiveness yes, i guess it's yeah. a film about obsessiveness and it's a film about about how you kind of like because technically, all the things the protagonist yeah. in the film speaks about and says is technically true. It's also my own belief stuff that he says. But he says it in a certain way and in a certain context uh, that uh, loops back to what I said about it's not important what you want to know, but why you want to know it. It is, I think I have to say, it is... Uh, you can be absolutely right about a certain kind of thing, but the way how you portray that or, or, or how you bring that to the world makes all the difference. Yeah, yeah. You can be true. You you you, you can be an atheist, and I, I I'm I'm an atheist myself, but you can be a hardcore asshole about that <laughs> yeah, as well. That, that's you absolutely. know, it's not. I've been on the internet. The fact, it is true. true. It is yeah. factually true for me that atheism is. Is it's it's so obvious for me that this is how it is, you know. <laughs> there yeah, is no yeah. God, yeah. Uh, but but I, I feel mean, I feel similar, but I just say that I don't. There is not the, none of the gods that we talk about are the one. Yeah, if there yeah, is one. Maybe. We don't know about him. Maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> or but, it. We don't know so about it. It's it's, uh, it, it's important how you relate to your world. So like like uh, like yeah. the nerds the, uh, and and nerddom is always in relationship to your social surrounding. It's in relationship to how other people think. And even if you're true, if, if, even if you're right about something, that doesn't mean that you can behave with other people in a certain way. You shouldn't be too... Yeah, just like in, in a certain way, it's, it's, it's an ethical story about how not to be a nerd in a certain right. way. Does that make I, sense? <laughs> no, and if I could, like... I've seen Trace Route and I've seen uh, Masking Threshold and I've seen some of the other stuff, uh, especially like your talks and everything. And what I found interesting about Masking Threshold, let me see if I can put this properly into words. Um, your other stuff is very outward looking. It's very concerned with the outer world and society and people and how they interact and how they're interacting with you. Uh, what I found very interesting and what I think is really, I'm trying to compliment you here, is that you're kind of looking a different direction in this movie. Where you're looking inward. Yeah, uh, this that's is why all the macro shots and all the this stuff. The macro shots, it's yeah. coming from inside his mind. It's a lot of there's a lot of stuff about flesh, and what and you know and what flesh is and what we yeah, are yeah. as things and beings and and what you are and what it means for what your actions will be in the future. I'm just saying, I, I really enjoyed how this was looking inward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciated yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Which is, in a certain way, the opposite of how, how I usually operate. So, in a certain right, way, right, I tried, right. I tried to, I tried to conjure up 
the bad Johannes or the, the dark, <laughs> right, the right. dark side of 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 nerddom. Where you, should, a little must, not, you should have had a mustache on. Yeah, yeah. Evil where, where, where you're not outward looking or, or opening up, <laughs> but but the world is coming. It's becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and suddenly you're sitting there only looking at magnification of pieces of pizza on 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 your desk, and that uh, suddenly, like in in the case of my protagonist, uh, suddenly should give you like the truth. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it, no, it's it, not, it also, not at all. It also makes things that we usually find pleasant seem absolutely grotesque yes, which I, yes. I appreciate it like you're almost breaking it down to its molecular form you yeah. know it, like yeah like you said a ma- like the shot of pizza or the shot of skin things yeah. like that i'm like normally you know you look at somebody they're beautiful but all you got to do is magnify yeah. down to their me- to their molecules and they're absolutely grotesque and then, disgusting and piles this, of meat you know yeah and this is this is uh, i guess if if i would have to 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 find kind of like a like 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 a a form of of artistic reference for the whole film, I have to say it is kind of like an H.P. Lovecraft way okay. of looking at the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And for me, I mean, there's a lot of debate about like, H.P. Like Lovecraft. He's, like, like he's discovering it as he goes along. Like exactly yeah, because yeah. Lovecraft is usually using the form of the diary. Uh, of writing up yeah. things and it's usually it's also very straightforward and also my film is very straightforward you kind of know it will end it will end badly but you just don't know how badly it will end yeah you know it's just like yeah. it's just like there's, there's I, I, uh, I'm let's say this. Sure it has a three-act structure uh, i never thought about it, it when i think i, I think it. there it, it's in there but it's not as clear as like a traditional yeah, film might yeah. be. but yeah. i when I, while watching it i had two i'm not going to say them i had two endings in mind and I was wrong on both of them. Really? So yeah, I, I always I don't... thought I always thought it's quite it's quite clear how that ends <laughs> for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, my two guesses were wrong, and they're so they're close to what happened. But I, yeah, I'm trying. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to. Okay. Ruin it. No, for no, anyone. no. And and I, I I think I also didn't want to be very, let's call it, super creative about the whole thing. I thought like what what I what I what I tried to do is like I knew that on on the one on the one side there is of course the the voice of a narration and you, it, it's true you could probably listen Which, to that it's not your as, voice as, right as an, as an, huh? that's not your voice it's not it's no not. it's not my voice no 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 I I I I was listening to two hundred voices that <laughs> my 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 uh, my my co producer Julianne she she lives in L A. Okay. And she was also my my casting agent. Okay. And so she, I, I told her I need two hundred nerdy voices to <laughs> listen to. And then I I found Let me tell that you something. specific voice. Hey, number one, that it's a great performance. The voice, actual performance. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. Amazing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, and well. I don't know if you've heard this yet, but while watching the movie, the whole time, he sounds a lot like Steve Carell. There is really I have not. Yeah, like ah. like the office is Steve Carell. Like I can hear it every. He says certain words, and I'm like, mm-hmm. man, it sounds like Steve Carell is talking. Really? Yeah. It's, I, I, well, I, it was it was really hard because usually when you think about that's nerdy a compliment voices, too. By the way, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, but usually if you think about nerdy voices, and I have the tendency to do that, you, you're like, <laughs> I will have a very yeah. interested in Linux. <laughs> so it's very it's very screechy and 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 high pitched. And I was, I wanted like a nerdy sounding voice, but that also has like a certain level of gravitas and, and darkness no, no, in it. He's yeah, got a yeah, very so. smooth, syrupy voice, yet yeah, it yeah. still plays as, as geeky. Yeah, yeah. So, because, I mean, yeah. you have to listen to that mansplainer, let's call it as it is, <laughs> uh, for 90 minutes. And uh, so so it has, to, like the, 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 the voice has to some kind of like hypnotic, alluring quality to it. So Yeah, really. Uh, my only criticism, if I had one, would be that I could tell it. W- I could see you on the screen. <laughs> like, oh yeah, and yeah. I, I th- like if I if you know what you sound like, that's the only thing that disconnected yeah. me. But the good thing is, like, like <laughs> most no, people won't know that. Yeah, yeah. most people, mo- most people will will not know that. But I mean, it was really for 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 production for the production oh, reason no. because it's, because I, I shot perfect. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was like the the, the the team was really small. It was me. And Florian, my camera guy, and and uh, Yasmin, uh, who is uh, is also my my co producer in, in in Vienna, and we were just like the three of us were doing that thing, <laughs> uh, and no, it's great. and uh, and and then I like so I knew from the beginning that that I 
I would use a voice actor uh, for 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 the speaking parts. And only in the editing, I realized that uh, it's probably beneficial to see at least uh, like a couple of times a little bit more because in the in the beginning, so the concept was that you really only see uh, really tiny little aspects of his face. Mm. Uh, and when I was editing it and we shot a couple of other scenes as well. And so the, the, the only things that we had to shoot after, like, so we shot everything chronologically. And in the, in the end, we realized we need a couple of shots where you sit, you see, see the person sitting at the desk or you see him from behind or something like that, where you kind of at least have a certain figure at some points. Uh, so it, so it wouldn't have worked with just the macro shots or right, just right. the super detailed uh, things. And at that point, of course, it's it's uh, for people who know me way more obvious that it is me. <laughs> and, and like I said, that's only the very few people who are watching. Yeah. 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 But yeah. that didn't take away from it. I was yeah. just like, I saw I saw your like there's parts where you're like biting into the pizza I yeah. can see it was clearly your your mouth. I, I like you know. I can just... <laughs> right, right. Yeah, something <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, honestly, you could, you could piece your. I think what's good is the things that you added. You could actually piece your face together in your mind as you watch it. You Probably, know, yeah. like you, you, like you kind of see enough where you can mentally picture what you look like without. Although, seeing although I, I was sometimes making it hard for me because I was I was uh, like in the editing. I was sometimes just like flipping my my face, so so I have this like I have this mole here. <laughs> sometimes and, it's, yeah. and, and I have it on both sides, I guess. <laughs> so, but oh, whatever. But but the thing is, because I just recently, like three weeks ago, started submitting it to film festivals, and as you say, it is it is a very strange movie. Yeah, I is. think I think it, uh, and I I wonder. Like how, uh, but but I mean it, it's a, but it is a horror film. I mean it is oh, like yes. genre wise, it is a horror film. But I'm I really I really so far we we'll, we will see in the upcoming weeks how 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 it goes. But I I've really no idea how that film will will be seen by the traditional horror film festivals. Right. Will they like it? Will it be too bizarre for them? Uh, it also has a very exponential like curve of 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 uh, escalation. It it didn't escalate quickly. It, it has a certain level of. Uh, I mean, it it it, it hints it, at things, it, and there are things that are 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 very awkward and very bizarre and gruesome, even before the classic escalation starts in the end. But it's scary. But still, it's it's scary. There's. Yeah. I, I'm saying that to you. Like it's scary in the way that like. Have you ever, I mean, maybe not so much the movie, but have you ever read American Psycho? Like, you know, like American. Uh, oh, where he has like pages and pages, pages of, of like the shaving creams and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, just describing things and talking about what's what he's thinking. And just yeah. like there is there was like a little bit of that to me where it was like mm -hmm. this guy is so in depth of who he's talking to and what he's talking about. It's actually starting to scare me even yeah, without yeah. him doing anything scary. Yeah. So, and I think at, at some know. point there's, there's, there's the point and that's probably interesting and different for different people. But I think that some people will hate the guy <laughs> even after like one minute of speaking. Yeah? <laughs> right. And some people will start hating him only after like 25 minutes or something like that, because something happens that just like pushes like, like, like there's something that happens where people say like, well, that's not cool anymore. So, and I think that that's also interesting for me to hear from, from people like, where is the point where, where you turn. start not liking that I, guy? I don't, I can tell you, I would tell you when we're not recording. Okay. I don't okay. want to spoil it, but there was a moment where I was like, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> so this is what we're doing. Okay. okay. And this is what he does. All right. Now it's start. It's uh, you could probably guess when it so yeah. it was some it was somewhere in like the the middle mark started yeah, yeah. to happen, and I was like, oh, and we're <laughs> yeah. So it the, the, I didn't I can't really say I felt like I loved him at the beginning, but it's definitely by the end. Yeah, 
You can't, yeah, not sure. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm try- yeah, I can't talk about anything. <laughs> but, I mean, but I know so many nerdy people and so many people, you know, like from hacker conferences and stuff like that. Yeah. Where I have the same feeling. I think I tried to a little bit uh, encapsulate that a little bit, that you have conversations with people and, you know, nerds are kind of weird anyways. So, but but sometimes there's the point of where I say like, that's enough. I talked to you for 15 minutes and now I'm not sure I like you and I go, <laughs> you know? Or just and even, course, or just like, I can't, you're even the opposite. Like you're a good person, but I do not want to hang yeah. out with you at all. Like, yeah. like I, I like I, the I, same I stuff. I cannot deal with your deficiency at the moment <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah, or I, I cannot, I, I can't cannot, take I cannot, I, I, I dislike what you're projecting on me now <laughs> and, uh, or something. Like yeah. Some, yeah. somebody that like you share all the same stuff, you like all the same stuff and you're just like, uh, they're they're a force that you just want to push away, no matter how good yeah. they are. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. But this the the movie is uh the movie is definitely like oh I don't want to say it's the work of a madman, but you're you're kind of a madman. You know, like like that to yeah. make a movie like that is it's, it's a little bit crazy, and I love it. I love I I love how ballsy it is for you to do that. Like, and no one that hasn't seen it knows what I'm talking about. But it's not something you'd ask of people normally to watch, you know, like <laughs> that. That's a, I, I, I take all of that as a, as a, yeah. as a big compliment. I'm trying to compliment you here with, <laughs> with also being kind of a weird compliment, yeah. but to, just to the fact that you're asking, you know, like even sending that to a festival, there's going to be festivals that watch that and go, what the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and that's fine. Right, I mean, it, I think that's a good. That's and, good. And I, I know, I know festivals, and I know that that people are also lazy, you know. And there is this classic way of like, ah, there is the film, and and people because I, I, I can totally see people watch the film and say like, ah, all this talking, what is going on? And then, <laughs> that, and then the thing starts where people just like hit hit the right key. To jump twenty seconds ahead, you know, let's like just like that kind of just, thing. Yeah. They're yeah. trying, yeah, yeah, like they're trying to get and, past and, the and, 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 and 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 they and they're hitting, uh, they're hitting ahead, hitting ahead, and suddenly everything is just like escalates and like, how did that happen? Why, why is this going? What, what did I miss? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back and start from scratch again to figure out what happened here. Yeah, yeah no, it's uh, it, it's it's remarkable how important all the dialogue is and all the runtime is to where you get to. And like, but it's also, there was a moment where I was watching it like, Oh, this is the whole movie. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was like, Oh, oh this yeah. isn't just an intro. No, because yeah. I, I thought like, I thought what, what the, what the film needs is kind of like the, the two sides. The one side is it could theoretically work as a, as an audio play or like, yeah, like, no, it a, like, it like yeah, it could because of, 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 of the sound design and all that stuff. And that, that would work, but, but it would also miss something of this, like, like strange, surreal beauty of this, like magnifications and this, the, 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 the algae and all that stuff and the pizza, whatever it is. So there, there, there is a, there's, there's definitely like something strangely mesmerizing about about the, the images, and it complements the whole thing. And it uh, like it, and I think you could probably just like watch the film without the. No, like, both both parts they work separately they, somehow. Yeah. Like, and I think you could probably put the the film without an audio track into yeah. an art exhibition as an endless loop in an art exhibition, and it might also work because because just put, uh, just put classical music something under it or something. Experimental. It has. It is a strange mixture of a genre film and an experimental film. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, no, you're. Yeah, it's it, no. I'm saying like it, it's it's also. I mean, you you talk about it a lot, but it's also like it's a subversion of horror films. Mm. You're not supposed oh, yeah. to do what you did, and you did it. Yeah. And you know, it it's obviously it's going to stand out to me as one of the most unique horror films I've ever seen. Because, wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've never seen a movie like that. I've never seen a movie that like that. So there you go. And I've seen a lot of movies. Yeah. This is a perfect time to hug that seal. Um, yeah, so I hope I haven't. I hope we haven't. That, that made that made the seal smile. <laughs> you smile. You smile. <laughs> no, but I I've really enjoyed it. Um, uh, and it definitely I it threw me through a loop. 
you know it, it, for a moment i was like jesus this is the whole thing and then eventually i was like i'm into it you know like yeah. there i so i had all those emotions while watching it cool you know so cool. i think it, it nice. worked yeah, nice. and it's a completely different experience from trace route you know like trace route i think that that was a much la- more laid back watch. Oh yeah, ab- absolutely, That's absolutely. Yeah. No, it was also something that yeah. I specifically was was looking for because usually uh, that is also part of my political activism and 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 art is that uh, as as you said, like it, uh, m- making people laugh is also m- m- helping them open up emotionally to to a message or something like that. So there's there's this. There's this quote by by Mao Zedong, and I'm not a big Mao fan, but 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 he says that that uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, it's I have to say that almost like in this like enemy mine voice from the <laughs> from from the 1980s. Mickey Mouse, <laughs> Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse, Mickey Mouse. But uh, Mickey Mouse is a, a sugar coated bullet <laughs> because it is it is uh, it is imperialism and it is propaganda. Yeah. But it's so sweet and so nice and you like to watch it. It's a sugar-coated bullet. And usually I like sugar-coated bullets. I like to make people laugh and I like to be entertaining and I, I have a like I have a tendency of also being a funny guy and and and, and like to laugh. So so usually I use a lot of humor in my projects. Yeah. And that for example that you can also see that in in uh in in, in trace route. Uh and in this film I see I'm, that in your I said, like, I see that even in your Facebook ink. <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I see. Like, there's and, always truth, but the stuff and, you share. And is... There is, there is a dark sense of humor also in masking threshold. Yes, but my, yeah. my, 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 but my my goal was to really do a straight up horror drama, yeah. psychological drama, like something that is not specifically made for 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 laughter. Yeah, you should sit in there and and think of like, what the fuck. <laughs> I mean, I definitely thought that. So yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, but I think uh, to some degree I was prepared for it because I, we've sort of spoken before. Like yeah. I, I was ready for anything. I did not guess it would be what it was. Yeah. So congratulations well, I mean, it's on not, that. it's not a classic. It doesn't, it doesn't follow the classic, you know, like uh, uh, Hitchcock suspense or something like yeah, yeah. that. It no, is, no, it no. is, it has, it has. And like a friend of mine asked, asked me, so, because she, she doesn't like horror films, but she wants to watch my film because she heard so much about it. And she asked, and she said like, oh, but then I can just like, I, I, I can just like, you know, when, 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 when the creepy stuff happens, I can just like put my, my hands over my eyes and, and I will know. And then, you know, what, what people do in horror films if they don't want to see the, the crazy stuff. Yeah. And I said like, that doesn't work like that in my film. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 they're like, the classic thing in a horror film when you know that something crazy is gonna happen and you can do that that never happens in my film right no you're, you're right kinda like you you kind of run into it like with open eyes <laughs> no and, and, and uh, like i saw there's a there's i don't know what kind of response you're gonna get get from this i can't tell you but i can say for me i even saw a lot of craft in the writing um there is setups and callbacks to things in there yeah. I, I don't want to say any of them but there's uh there's like you know parallel relations between things that are mentioned and yeah. that work in the end they actually you know pay off in the end you know like it's not just a guy talking no no, no 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 there no, is no. stuff there but no i, I know I'm, I'm at the point where i say like no no i you're gonna I, have to I fight think, that, i think though. the process writing writing the book and i had a co-writer samantha uh, who, interestingly, I've never met in person, and I've never spoke to on Zoom. Ever. So it was like I I, I read something uh, online, uh, and she's also like uh, she she's writing a lot about horror games. Uh, she she lives in she lives in in, in rural Pennsylvania. Oh wow! And I, I read some of her stuff online, and then I sent her a, an email and said like, "Hey, I have this basic outline for 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 the film." I know what's going to happen. Uh, would you like to look over it and add stuff to it? So I think like, would, would you, would you like to help me with the script? And, uh, and she said, yes. And then we worked back and forth on Google doc. And in the end, when she put all her stuff in, I, I of course had to work over it one more time. And I even like during the shooting, I had to rewrite stuff. 
so there were lots of more iterations going on. But in the end, we collaborated on that script. Uh, and and I, I don't even know how she looks like. That's amazing. Yeah, that that's, that's the incredible. internet, you know. Yeah, that's the internet, man. And, and they want to get rid of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. That, well, if that doesn't show. I mean, it doesn't show. It seems like a clear vision made by someone who would be in the same room with you, especially since the whole thing takes place in a room. It seems very intimate. Uh, no, and the fact the that it was made because, miles because apart. I thought I, I I need someone because I knew that it the basic structure is something like a Lovecraft story, and yeah, I knew yeah. that she's a she's a big Lovecraft buff. And she and she she writes that stuff a lot. So I thought, like, so especially concerning the, uh, some of the structural parts and stuff. Like, I thought, like, it it's just like, and it's also just uh, more fun. I, I like to work with people because there's in in German we say I try to avoid to to uh, in the eigenen and super So you 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 don't you don't want to be uh, stewed in your own broth, as we say in German. <laughs> so like, it, it's just like nasty. You want someone else with you in the stew, well, you, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I got you. Yeah, you don't want to do it alone. Yeah. Um, no, that yeah. that also kind of makes me want to bring up the fact, something we brought up at the beginning, the fa- how we met. Um, yeah. Uh, like, without, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone with that with that movie, but we met in a very untraditional way. And I, when I say that, I mean is I was doing a film project with some friends it's called the it's called uh, the transformations of the transformations of the doctors Jenkins and eventually people will be able to see it but without spoiling anything our first contact was me and you conversing over email where I wasn't myself <laughs> yes because you were uh, well, a strange I'm, chatbot yes yeah without I don't want to give too much away here yeah yeah but, yeah, but yeah. I you and were, I thought you were Michael G. Epstein. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people did, and then a lot of people that were talking to me had no clue who I am as a person, which I think is really funny. But uh, you were definitely out of all the people that I conversed with, you were one of the ones that understood it better than anyone. It, uh, so it, it, it took me. I think it took me one exchange. Yeah, I think like one thing where like ah, that's how the game is played. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. you and know. then I started to write in this like <laughs> gibberish, uh, like like half, uh, yeah, whatever I thought like the, yeah, right. the, the, the AI understands. Right. No, and uh, I remember I even commented to like Michael and Sophia and the other people involved, uh, uh, Stephen and uh, Kate. Uh, I even said like this Johannes guy. <laughs> Look at these emails he's sending me. Like you totally, you you were so on board with it. It yeah. was it was incredible. Like like that was the start of our communication as two people. Was, yeah. Was this yeah, yeah. Uh, where we, perfect? We didn't. You never met me. You didn't know I existed. Yeah, which makes the, <laughs> I I love making up that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. that's that, that's 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 what what I like to do. And I thought yeah. like, hey, like, and also, I mean, sometimes artists are a little bit self absorbed. Yeah. And yeah. they want that all the other people are playing with them in their universe. <laughs> Yeah. And they're kind of obnoxious when they have to go to other universes to play in other universes. But I liked it. Yeah. I like I like it a lot. No, like I, I, the moment no. the moment I get the, the rule set and how does it work and stuff like nah, I'm 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 totally into it. No, right. <laughs> and what I was so happy about is the more I learned about you and as we we talked a little bit online and everything, I was like, I'm so happy we met on that project because to me that project was another in a long line of things where we're like subverting filmmaking pretty much. I mean, we're making fun of a common thing that happens in film circles and we're doing, you know, we try to do something bigger with it. Yeah. And I was like, when I met you, I was like, okay, this, I was like, that's why when I first met you, like I don't, I'm not in real life, but I was like, this is why that guy's emails were so amazing. Cause I was like, I saw Then I saw your Ted talks and all this stuff like, Oh, he got it. He was there before we ever got there. <laughs> like yeah, you you just like because no, I but the subversion I mean, of it and everything. The, the, the thing about the film, I think it's the same thing. In a, in a certain way, I have no idea how the horror film community and the film festivals will will react to my horror film. Yeah. In the same way, I'm also looking forward to if uh, the other if the film festivals will get. <laughs> Uh, the doctors Jenkins. So it's, because there is, there is, it is, it is, it is weird because doctors Jenkins is not that pen. It's not at no, all that. No, yeah. But it has an obscure 
it, it, it I, I can't even I can't describe it, but there, it is it is so grotesque, and it is <laughs> it is it is so like it, it's almost it's almost like clown esque in a certain way, but yeah. it is very sincere about it <laughs> it's it's sincere but, while we're also all like complete shoveling. goofing it's it, 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 goofingly sincere <laughs> i mean i feel like we're shoveling shit onto ourselves too like it's not just oh yeah yeah it, we're, we're taking the piss out of ourselves and the fat and filmmaking and and this whole idea of what yeah. we're talking and about it, it, it like i'm, I'm not I, I can't really talk about it i, guess, I know we're talking about these movies where we can't we don't want to no no <laughs> but, but i wanted to talk about this with you because it was just such a unique way to meet yeah. and your your whole vibe of your all your artistic stuff that i've seen is i'm very into it and i'm just happy that we met on something where i was like okay this is <laughs> this seems to be in the, the wheelhouse you know yeah uh, you know wonderful now it was great meeting you it's yeah. it's, it's, it's great that you have me on the show oh i I'm think so at some thankful. point at some point we have to end no yeah it is, no yeah it is, no it is, it, is, it, is, it is no the no, thing is like at that, some yeah. point uh I have I hadn't really had dinner because <laughs> I know exactly like if I eat too much before I do something like that I know I will have my blood sugar crush right in the middle and then I'm getting No, let me let me let me tell you. I do the same thing except I know that I'll have to take a shit. I'll have to shit during. <laughs> like I have to make sure when I do one of these that I don't have to shit during it cuz I have literally ruined entire podcast by having to shit. And you could have had a really great career <laughs> as a Vietnamese actionist right? in the 1960s. I yeah. could have changed the world with these battles. Absolutely. Let me tell you. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> Well, yeah. So, so, so my, my my thing is like it's not. Uh, it's now. 10, oh, we're in the same time zone. We're in the same time zone. It's ten thirty. Yeah. Well, ten thirty. Perfect. Perfect was, time for I was going to say where where can people go to see your stuff? What's the best way to best place to send them on the internet? The great on and the powerful internet. internet. Oh yes. So I would say, what is the best place? Of course, the stuff is all. Uh, I mean, number one, mm -hmm. uh, and. That is kind of like strange because I only go there every now and then to correct some really factual errors there. But my Wikipedia page is not bad. Okay. It seems it seems there are a couple of people who uh, just like who did they edit it, and I don't <laughs> know them. I at one one time I tried to contact one of the people who edit my Wikipedia page who that person is and why he seems to be obsessed with me and changing stuff on my page all the time. He's, your biggest, he's your biggest fan. And he never replied. <laughs> he never replied. I think he, like it, it, maybe he feels ashamed or something like that. But the Wikipedia page is actually really not bad. All right, so if I'll, you I'll put get, a link to the Wikipedia if, page. If, if you want to want to get an overview of all the stuff that I'm doing, that's, that's actually pretty okay. And then, of course, monochrome, monochrome AT slash English. Okay. Or EN, then because we have a German and an English version of, of the page. And in general, like I'm on I'm, I'm I'm on most of the social media platforms and okay. people can find stuff. But uh and your but, and the movies that are available are publicly are the, Trace Route. Uh there 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 uh yeah there are many, many old uh short films and stuff like that also on, on YouTube. Uh, there's a YouTube channel of Monochrome, okay. uh, for example. You could link to that. Uh, but some of that stuff is only in German, and I never subtitled it to English. All the better. But, <laughs> uh, but, 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 uh, but all, the, all the feature films are on, on Vimeo, yes. They're all, some of them, okay, I'll link to your Vimeo account. Though. Yeah, the Vimeo, the Vimeo is a good, good, good place to find the feature films. And some of them, of course, are like on Vimeo on demand, which is kind of weird because you go to the Vimeo page, but... The, but the ones you have to pay for, they don't list it on the Vimeo page because it's on the Vimeo on demand page or something. I don't know. All right, I'll, I'll link that then. Uh, uh, Vimeo is very odd for me. I'm not. Yeah, there. it is odd. But yeah. I mean, that's why uh, why I think like the Wikipedia page is probably okay because all the basic information is there, and if people want to see it, they can just Google all the stuff because the stuff is all to find. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, Johan, I just want to thank you for doing this. And I'm so happy to actually get a chance to talk to you. I'm Yay. actually, I really want to stress, I'm I'm a big fan. Um, Thank you so much. Like, oh, I, like, I, I've watched your movies and I, you know, I'm a big fan of Masking Threshold, but I'm a big fan of your TED Talks even. So yeah. I'm a fan of yours. Uh, and Thank it, you. It's all thank happened in the last like six months, but yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan. So. Thank, thank, thank you so thank you so much for having me. And yeah. uh, uh, if I would have known you earlier, I've been to Baltimore a couple of times. 
Well, look, if you ever yeah. come back. Exactly. That's that's what I'm what I'm you planning know, to do. Yeah. Well, if you ever come, you back... show me the best pizza in town. Talking about macro shots of pizzas. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I promise. Yeah. No. If you ever if you ever come into town, you got you got. I'll buy you dinner. Oh. Yeah. No. I buy. Uh, okay. You I'll buy me dinner, and I buy you. I buy you drinks. Buy me an Arnold Palmer, a gallon of Arnold Palmer. That's what I want. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's what I want <laughs> from Walmart. I, I can do some Walmart. workout with that thing. You can like, like mm. you're making me thirsty. Mm. I can drink of this. Mm. Yeah, I wish mm. I had some. Uh, but yeah, th- uh, this uh, this will be up next Wednesday. And I just thank you again, man. Thank you. Thank All you right. so much. Bye bye.